twist his arm, why don't you? Mm -hmm. All right, welcome anybody. Anybody and everybody who is anybody. watching. Anybody. <laughs> You're awfully optimistic about this stream. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me make sure. It is gooey. Funny. I just well, I just got an alert that you're streaming. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so did I. Apparently, it works. Okay, awesome. Uh, so welcome, welcome back for our four month hiatus. I think it was four month. No, it was like two, if that. Jeez. It may as well God, like, I appreciate what he's saying. <laughs> I appreciate that you you know role play, but that is that's just dramatic. We were gone. Seasons, moons passed. Empires ri rose and fell. Um, Finals were taken and a passed. government shut down. <laughs> yeah, but that's part for the course now. <laughs> we've had a whole civilization rise and fall since we've. Seriously, this is now the third American empire. Yeah, at this point. Ah. But I put up a, a short synopsis. Anybody that's watching, I'm sure. Hopefully, at least you remember what happened last time. If not, you can always go to Josh's uh, YouTube and refresh yourselves. I know I've done so. Um, I gave the players here a quick rundown of what happened um, and kind of got them back on track. So, everybody okay? Any questions about what happened last time? Any clarifications that need to be made? Nope. Oh, let me grab my player's handbook. Dang. I am unprepared. How how dare you not have the Bible, Josh? Oh, jeez. And you come, you come to my table the day of my daughter. About to say, I have um, many Bibles, Tony. You're going to have to be one, <laughs> far more specific. Much more specific. Like, there, there's the ones by Tolkien. There's the ones by, uh... Tolkien wrote a Bible? Wow. Well, yes, the holy book. Mm -hmm. wow. Which one? Well... Yeah. <laughs> Well, They're you have the Old Testament, the Cimmerillion, and the New Testament, the yeah. the uh, Lord of the Rings, with the uh, with the Apocrypha in there, the Hobbit. Mm. <laughs> that was the perfect. Does that make the movies the Book of Mormon? Oh no 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 no! The 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 Book of Mormon no. is fan fiction. The uh, the movies are the message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that didn't get that joke, the message is the modern "quote unquote" translation of the Bible. It is a it is a very youth. layman's translation of the Bible. Thank you. <laughs> very, <laughs> very layman. If you want a good translation, okay. do the ESV. That's all I'll say. Anyway, <laughs> I'm a nine NIV girl, but that's because I was given one. Yeah, it's okay. If it doesn't have thou's, it's not for thou. Just putting it out there. King J all the way. Yeah. Um, King James still death. <laughs> okay. So, uh, editions of Bibles aside. Um, NASCAR Bible. Oh, God. <laughs> and Lord did say, come down upon a plume of yonder black smoke. I'm sorry. I'm a subscriber to Supply Side Jesus. Y'all are heathens. <laughs> Oh, let's not get me started on the new King James Version. Oh. The new <laughs> King James Version? Yeah, there actually is one. Oh, boy. Well, then, before that particular group gets started. Um, <laughs> so last we left our heroes, uh, they, had, they were starting to come back together after discovering a few things uh, about the situation evolving around Celestia um, that seemed worrying at best. Um, if you guys want to, we can go ahead and go through those where everybody kind of shares with each other what they found. Um, totally up to you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, so are we starting then in the... Uh, yep, in the black cello. Cool. And can everybody hear me okay? Am I cutting in and out? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Weird. Good yeah. my end. Okay, never mind. I saw my connection going. Anyway. So... Uh, uh, what time of day is it? Is it like end of the day, I'm guessing? I'm going to say end of the day, yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, Othrix, uh, he, is, he basically wanders in, kind of weaving a little bit, not looking at anybody, kind of subconsciously finds where the rest of the group is sitting, sits down, and just is kind of staring off in the middle distance. Okay. You, uh, um, you alright there, Arthrex? Everything. 
all day. Nothing. Nothing. I mean... Are we talking about your love life, or... You're gonna need to be a little more specific. I, I spent all day in the library hoping to find at least some clue, some... You remember the, the coins? The coins we found in the, uh, in the miner's skin. Well, uh, our... Our friend here, our um, did you? Singular. I'm sorry. I remember. One coin. One coin. Oh, okay. Um, well, while I did manage to find some information, they uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find the notes where those are. Okay. Um, the coins themselves are from the city of a Krakow. Thank you. Uh, they they are from a Krakow before, uh, before the fall. As far as I can tell, they've either been minted to appear as such, but I don't think so. Their age and their look, uh, they... But why would... And in his skin, the, 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 the scrawling on his skin, the, uh, it, it, is a, it is a spell. It is a... I'm sorry, guys. Hang on. Yeah, you uh, you get a look into your future there, Arthrex, or something? I haven't seen you this shaken since, uh, well, ever, really. Point point of note, Josh is also suffering coughing attacks today, so if he goes silent, doesn't respond, that's why. I'm sorry about that. I'm terribly sorry. Okay. No, you're right. you're fine. Okay. Um, if anyone's watching the stream, if you're offended with Josh, you can just stop watching now. <laughs> because you're going to be getting things, a though. lot more of me. Okay. Uh, he, he oh, just, baby. The, the, mm. <laughs> okay. Back. I'm back. <laughs> and seen. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the, the, the inscriptions on his skin, it was some court kind of incantation, a spell. And the coins, they had to be connected somehow, but I cannot figure out why or how! And it is vexing! If we got I need... him a drink, he'd calm down a little bit. Yes, I need a drink. Here, take mine, drink. I'll get another one. <laughs> um, Y'all are nicer than me. I was going to make him go get his own. Authrix takes a sip and immediately begins to splutter because I'm guessing your alcohol content is a lot higher than what he's used to. I mean, yeah. yeah. He's an intellectual. <laughs> she, Shouldn't she he got be used to drinking his, all of his sorrows away? I'm sorry? He's an intellectual. Shouldn't he be used to drinking all the sorrows away? Well, yeah, true, but with usually your frou for your drinks. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's he's the cosmopolitan of the group. It, are there no duple box around here? What kind of tavern is this? A real tavern. <sighs> this actually probably um, for Varus might be a little too uppity. This is like yeah, a businessman's he, place. He's he's uncomfortable here. Noticeably. Um, what's the thought you're doing? How's she chilling out? Are you still playing on the on the stage? No, at this point she's probably come down. And... Lex, I think you're muted. No, we hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, she's fine. I just have left her muted then. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have come down to the uh, the table with everybody and uh, grab some moderately alcoholic drink, probably a light beer. And uh, just sat down, kind of listening to everything. Okay. All right, so Authrix is getting his drink. Um, anybody else want to share their experiences? Because there's been quite a bit going on. Uh, All I remember is a bunch of people being scared of us. So, <laughs> I'd yep. love to say we found something, but I don't know if it was the time of day or... Hallis is here, you know, wonderful face, but we didn't really hear a lot. People in the city really don't like us. Well, uh, to recap, you guys did hear that, um, at least partially, the um, the local column shrine is having a bit of a sleeping issue. Um, yeah, it, it might just be, be the... Lib Sarge. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. But in reality, this place kind of, I mean, sucks would be kind but the, the people here need help but lots reality, of help 
Let me see if I can find the notes specifically. Ah. Uh, oh, there's a lot more than what I looked here earlier. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, I, I, I'm not going to bore any of you with the with the standard. Uh, the novels are profiting, yada yada yada. yada. None of you are drunk enough for that yet. But uh, again, I don't know if it's the way we're dressed, but everyone was rather suspicious of us when we went trying to help the poor and figure out what's up. Also, the uh, the Shrine of Calm has, uh, I guess it's the water, maybe? I don't think it was the water. So, the, 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 uh, the followers of Calm can't sleep? Am I hearing that correctly? They're trying to get themselves as drunk as possible to sleep, and I mean, I'm one for a good drink, but if a city's that far gone, or if a people are that far gone, well, in, in, to be able to commune with their god, to be able to commune, they have to be able to sleep. That would be the very antithesis. Kitty. Did you just say kitty? Yes, I heard a kitty. <laughs> that would be my cat asking for my attention. <laughs> so, uh, Arthrix has hit upon the crux of it. I would think. Well, I suppose that makes the whole fires to the north mysteriously starting out of place for a season and that much more of a problem than we thought. Fires? You have my attention. We uh, may have went to the farmer's market. Um, Ooh, did you get avocados? They get were out. not Actually, affordable. No, no, I'll, I'll leave. You're obviously fit right in here with a place like this. What, 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 what do you mean a place like this? I mean, it's a, yes, it's a very uh, fine establishment, I, I must say, but I mean, I, I, I'm more comfortable, I believe, in the, uh, in the academic setting. I asked for beer, and they gave me... I still don't know what this is. Oh, that is a... Free. That is a Pilsner, I believe it's called. <laughs> <sighs> but... This is not an IPA. Oh. Whoever invented that should be damned to the deepest level of hell. IPAs are for people who don't know how to make beer. I want a beer not to hurt me when I drink it. <laughs> IPAs are the I fucked up of beer. We, we can't throw this whole batch away, so just add more hops. We'll sell it that way. Exactly. Well, we fucked up the brewing process for this Pilsner. Add more hops. We'll call it an IPA. Ugh. Anyway, Bia, you were saying? <laughs> yeah, didn't find all the avocados, um, but the local farmers are apparently being plagued by wildfires when there shouldn't be wildfires to the north. I'm sorry, of, uh, out of character. Yeah. What time of year is this, Tony? Uh, it's past summer, probably going toward mid-autumn. Okay, got it. Sorry, continue. So, best we can tell, they might not be, uh... All we natural. don't know what's called... Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing they're not organic like the avocados. Oh, that's terrible. And Athal, you can always regale them with the tale that you heard from the trade caravan. Those oh, was that the... Suspicious... Whole... Oh, was that the one of the suspicious characters? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we also heard, I don't know if Bia heard it, but we heard about this caravan that had run into this group of druids, and they mm. asked the druids to bless the caravan. And instead of blessing the caravan, they kind of snarled and bared their teeth and like got away as fast as possible. Like, terrible. I mean, that sounds like every interaction I've ever had with a druid. Yeah. <laughs> You're not normal, though. Yeah, you've been living <laughs> underground for how long? <laughs> About to say, I don't want to meet the druids that are underground. Uh, you did. One of them. Oh. Kef. No, I'm just kidding. Kef, Kef. <laughs> he took the form of a vole. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Oops. That was a bad joke. Okay. 
Um, so, yeah, so that's pretty much the catch up. Um, does anybody have any specific reactions to this news? Because I know you guys were putting some some overtime in on acquiring some of this information. I know it's been a few days since you've been in Stromness, and the Lord General Drac has not um, reached out to you since you delivered the papers on the Viper since then. <sighs> Well, to find out any more information on these coins, and upon the script that was... <laughs> Sorry. And upon the script that was upon his body, I I don't think I can find any more information here. There might be some more at the uh, the college, or dare I say, we may have to tra we may have to find some more first-hand knowledge. That would be alarming to a few of you who know if if you're suggesting to go to a Krako. You know, oh, the fire sounds suddenly more interesting. What's the big deal? It's just some coins. Um, why don't you roll me history, John? Do I have to? Yes, you do. <laughs> do I have to play? Unless Dungeons anybody, and unless anybody, <laughs> does anybody, uh, does anybody else would like to roll it in his stead to explain it to him? Not me. <sighs> Let me just pull up my damn sheet. You may hit hard, but you are a yokel when it comes to overworld things. Excuse you. <laughs> I'm a yokel of the people. <laughs> my name's Cletus of the people I'm here to rescue y'all <laughs> with a banjo on his back and a song in his heart <laughs> I did not mean to boom that. Whatever. 17 nice you have um yokel that I, I'm sure as your <laughs> your uh, your party members will hastily explain to you um a cracko has not been set foot in since the tieflings were cast out uh, they very much guard it jealously as the uh, basically the tarnished jewel of their kingdom. Um, if they can't get into it, ain't nobody getting into it. And there's been quite a few people who have tried, um, and their bodies are still on the iron walls, hmm. um, rotting to this day. Um, but there are a few very clever smugglers who claim to have gotten in without being uh, being caught. Nobody's sure if they're lying, though. They came out with a right. bunch of Krako coins. <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't much fancy pissing off a city full of tieflings. Or half a city, I don't know. More of the tieflings outside of it we need to be concerned about. Once we're inside, we're fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, they it's can't getting, go inside. It's getting back out. That's the problem. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. It's first steps. First steps. How good are they with boats? That's a real question. Very. Oh, tieflings. Tieflings can can do boats. There are some packs that travel the uh, and fish um, in the lower the, the the sea of rot and um, some of the southern seas. Our Goliath friend would know all about them, I assume. She would. Um, got any? Interesting tidbits about the tiefling sailors, Bia? I have not bothered them, and they have not bothered me. And their ships are very interesting colors, that is all I will say. Like, what kind There's of colors? There. Painted. Specifically so we can avoid them. Hmm. Like a them. vardo with sails. Oh. And also, you're supposed to take three shots after coming across one of them, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. <laughs> How is anybody sober on your ship? You, <laughs> that's a very good question. <laughs> 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 laughing at the assumption that sailors are sober. I live underground and I know that. Sounds like a very dangerous line of work. He literally lives under a rock. <laughs> well, it's the best, it's the rock. only cool place. I mean, he's cool place in the hot summer. Are you calling me a lizard? Because that's the wrong person. <laughs> I thought we were talking about Josh. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I have dragon blood. I am not a lizard. How well, are you, you fair and snow, dragon thing? blood? I'm sorry, two people talking at once. What? 
Go ahead, John. Insults, I think. How do you do with the snow there, dragon blood? He points to his fur. <laughs> and all I said was, what, you don't do that tongue thing? Tongue <laughs> thing? <laughs> Where they flick their tongue about. in and out? <laughs> That's actually a very offensive gesture among other families. <laughs> You can see his crest start to rise just a tad. Yeah. I'm just going to sit in the corner and laugh. <laughs> so you guys have these these various happenings uh, through Celestia. Um, last anybody checked, it's been about, about a week um, since you uh, initially ran down to uh, Gorthal. Gor Gorthal? Hold on. Look up real quick. Uh, Gedkal. Yeah. Since you saw the sights at Dead Cal. Um, what would you guys like to do? I mean, you have your home base at the moment. Um, so far, the Lord Drax has not called upon your services again. Um, it's kind of your opportunity to, you know, kick back if you want to, or maybe, you know, if you think something could help with the, uh, the revealing of the threads that are keeping this plot together. Um, please take these sideways. More than please welcome. take these sideways. <laughs> I'm kind of interested in the uh, wildfires and the um, druids. Especially they might be related. Especially if it threatens the avocados. Sure, <laughs> the avocados is what I'm worried about. As far as I figure, anything superstitious and weird might get us a paycheck if we tell the Lord Drax that it might have something to do with all of his weird stuff. I mean, if anyone's going to know that something's up in the world, it's druids. And the fact that we have essentially the uh, the acolytes of a god being interfered with on a level, I, I would dare say, supernatural means within the very city. Yeah, well, you know, gods and interference, that kind of goes hand in hand. I, I figure if, if we want to, we can have them send out letters to their brethren and see if anybody else is having the problem and by the time we get back from dealing with the wildfires and the druids they might get a response rather than you know just telling them to turn their head and cough and hoping we can figure out what there's going on with them that way I offered to <laughs> knock them out but it refused hmm. they must be not that Gee, desperate I wonder why. they must be not be that faithful I guess hmm well, I mean, um, I, my, fires is going to be a trip. Well, my journey for information, I believe, would take us much farther. So, I, if I suggest, we probably would stay closer. If the Lord Drax needs to contact us, if not, we can inform him if we need to travel abroad. And plus, I do believe the the coins, the information, may be directly connected with uh, with the asphalt, with the viper. And with the um, disconcerting connection between the two. I don't know if we can figure out what's up with the feral druids. Maybe they'd have some answers. Maybe. Might be connected. Okay. Plus it is close. So from what I'm hearing as a GM, everybody's more kind of leaning toward the fires than anything. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. I'm concerned right. about the... Followers of Calm, but I don't think we I'm not a god doctor. doctor. Yeah, we don't have any. Uh, <laughs> Damn it, Jim! I'm, I'm a doctor, not a god doctor. A um, I, I think deserve. Bia's idea actually probably holds a lot of water. I second that. You. Okay. Um, and Josh, as far as your research goes, mm -hmm. you know that. Um, make me a. Ooh, yeah. Let's say wisdom. Just straight wisdom. Am I wise as fuck? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Rub the crest for luck. Please don't. Okay, I'm sorry. Trying to bring on my coach. I am <laughs> not really wise please. as fuck. Crap. <laughs> I don't know which. Where are you rolling? Uh, wisdom. You just said straight wisdom, right? Yeah. Are you rolling physical dice, or are you rolling on the roll? No, card? no, no. I was, I was just trying to get Here's to my page. Check. I didn't have my character sheet up. Oh. <laughs> Wise as F. 
Holy shit. All right, well. You know um, all. You see all the floof rules. You start pondering, <laughs> because obviously your compatriots are not on the same page as you, as far as the importance of this particular coin. At least so you think. Um, so you start thinking of different ways around it. Because at the same point, even if you do go back to Lorness and you go to the Arcane College, there's not going to be a lot for them to help with this particular portion of the research. This is very much an academic progress. But... You do know a few people in Lorness. And people who you've worked with in the past who have done this specific type of work for you. Yes. You know, basically a few people owe you some favors for some, you know, hot items that you got off their hands. Um so maybe sending a letter to them, you know, maybe a quick scribe of the uh the uh um the coin and uh whatever spell that you've managed to chalk out maybe your researchers can help with that all right uh would it would uh just out of character would people like uh, uh like people of the lost house uh be people i'd be sending a letter to or just just my connections in general just your connections in general most likely you uh i would i will say you know a um a professor or two um who um might be able to help you with this. People who are more interested in a Krako than, say, the Dragon Houses. All right, so I'll start writing letters then. Okay. Um, with those, you can have them sent pretty quick. Um, there's basically, if you want to pay, um, we'll say 20 gold, um, you can have that sent automatically and immediately um, to a transcribing station that's stationed in Lorness. Basically, think like very fancy telegraph. Whatever you write on the paper immediately gets scribed on another sheet of paper. It's like a medieval fax service. Uh, 12th century f- fax. 12th century fax. <laughs> um, well, um, I, I do have some people I could contact about the coins. Uh, some folk who I have uh, met in my l- less than up and up dealings, we would say, uh, and I could contact them Robin rather quickly. The poor people. I'm sorry. Nothing. I think I was just slighted. <laughs> I didn't hear it either, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I'll listen back on the replay, uh, uh, <laughs> and then I'll I'll message you. You son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> well, I, and I have the means, but I don't have. The means, as it were, is, is rather an expensive process, and I am not the most, uh, shall we say, well endowed. <clears throat> Probably that, shouldn't go spreading that around, buddy. That came out wrong. <laughs> did it. Sure, it did. Uh, I've got fifteen gold to put towards your endowment. I would only. <laughs> <laughs> Best mess up ever. <laughs> All votes for starting them. a party endowment instead of a party fund. <laughs> the the and the Authrix endowment fund. Yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, because he got an email once that would help him. It, it, it it's a blue gem. Uh, so yes, I, I I would only need seven gold to accomplish this tax test, and I would I, I would pay you back at my earliest opportunity. It's yours for that joke. <laughs> I like to imagine that every time he accidentally coughs, it's just that Authrix took a drink of his drink and it's like. <laughs> um, yes, I'm trying to cover the embarrassment. All right, so. I am broke, but I've mailed letters. Okay. Um, does anybody want to take a, a quick stroll over to the the Shrine of Calm and see if they can send out their own letters? I'll go take a walk with them. They weren't completely off put by me. Okay. Um, when you get there, you do notice that the uh, the acolyte that you helped out uh, was very much is is in better straits. Um, it looks like he went through a really bad bar fight. <laughs> Uh, just deep, deep, like jet black bags under his eyes, and he looks like he, you know, met the wrong end of a horse kick. Uh, but he's standing. Um, 
And he, what you know, is he drinking? He went through about three quarters of a bottle of 151. Ooh. In, Ooh, in, a, in a night. Yeah. <laughs> and he still didn't pass out. Um, I mean, I'm not one for great life choices here, but. Well, and I mean, desperation breeds uh, ingenuity, if I recall the phrase correctly. Um, this just wasn't particularly inspired ingenuity. Um, so, he, yeah, he, he, he welcomes you back. Thanks you for your help. Um, and upon your suggestion that, you know, they should contact others, um, apparently they've, they've all been very busy to think about that. But he said it's been pretty slow today, so he'll he'll go ahead and take care of it. It's, he might have one of the other acolytes write it, though. He can't see too well after that last bender. Yeah, not the not the worst idea there, friend. Um, so past that, um, is there anything that you guys feel that you're going to need um, to pick up for this venture into the forest? I'll, I'll take nature checks, um, history, anything you guys want to throw for... This is what we call the footwork stage. <laughs> oh, before we go... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sure. No, go ahead. I was um, going to say... Are there maps offered? Yes. I'm sure you can find some. I don't know. Are I there? would like a very large fireproof cloth. Fireproof cloth. Okay. Or like um, something coated in a fire blanket, something that I can use to stamp something out. Ah, okay. So just like a heavy wool blanket kind of thing. I do have yeah, Ray of Frost. Have... So, and that's my cantrip. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you will you will certainly be able to find a heavy wool blanket. Um, probably be easy; it won't even encumber you at that point. Um, toss two gold toward it, can, and it is yours. Can I see if there's any shops of Arcana in town? That oh, I... absolutely. Okay. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of shops for Arcana around. Um, potion makers, rune makers, um, artificers. Um, Stromness isn't the biggest city, um, but it is a trading city, so a lot of goods come in and out of here. So it makes it very good for um, varied businesses to pop up. Okay, I mean, primarily, I'm looking to see if anybody can tell me anything. I mean, I do this in every city I go to. Mm -hmm. Anything about my metal can with no opening that sounds like liquid inside. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about that. I haven't. It was it was um it was sloshing if I remember yes, correctly, right? Like there's some liquid. sort of slime yes. in it. Yeah, okay. well it sounds like liquid, but it's a metal can with no opening. <laughs> that I found on trick, a dig please. and has been my befuddlement since. Okay. Go ahead and roll me an arcana for that then. Okay. Um so Bia's got her blanket. Athalia, is there anything that you would like to look for or try and search out? Yeah. Um, I feel like I don't know. Well, I should know about traveling, but. Oh, absolutely. That know. is definitely something that you would know about. You've done it a lot. But I know nothing about fires or how to find people. <laughs> okay. Um, why don't you make me a. Let me bring up your sheet real quick. Pretty good at finding people. Yep, Hallis would definitely be good at finding people specifically. I'm good at finding um, things. Certain things. A family of things. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and roll me an investigation check then, Lexi? Um, okay. And we can see if you can sort of narrow down um, through talking with other travelers and people in the tavern where, like, kind of where these fires are taking place where they're centralized at. Okay. And that's what um, John, you said you wanted to do what now? Find Pick maps? Up a map. Pick up a map. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, not walking out into the great green unknown without a map. Definitely worth it. Um, throw uh, this... You can get a, a good map of the forest. Um, there's a couple cartographers guilds in the area. Um, you can have everything from a generalized map of the whole forest in that area. Um, to a specific couple sections. Um, you're not going to get a whole lot of detail like pathways and stuff like that, um, it, unless you're willing to pay a bit extra. Define extra. You're probably going to end up paying about 15 to 20 gold for a specific area with pathways and hunting trails. Because mm -hmm. it takes is, a lot of time and knowledge. That is pricey. Mm-hmm. 
However, you could, um, like I said, you could, uh, there's, there's the major roads, um, and small offshoots. You could probably buy for about 10 gold. Um, and for five gold, you can get a generalized, um, landmark, um, car talk, like more of a, um, um, set piece kind of map. It's still accurate, especially with landmarks, but it's more something that you would put up on your wall than something you would use to go mm. from place to place in a forest. I'll kick about, about 10 gold, gold to it. Okay. So 10 gold will get you major roads, major landmarks, um, in a pretty generalized area. Uh, Hallis, what would you like to kick toward this? Hmm. Uh, I do have more survival skills, so maybe like trying to figure out stuff we might need going up that way. Or oh, yeah. With what we're going on. Sure, if you want to roll me a survival check, for sure. We can go through that. And, yeah, and this isn't just your one pass, by the way. If you guys have more stuff you want to look for, please, by all means, let me. I'm just kind of going one by one so everybody has something. Um, let's see. Investigation with a Thalia. So you, you start talking with some of the... Um, actually, how do you want to do it? How do you want to talk to people? Do you want to try and hit up trade caravans, farmers, guards... Um, uh, how do you want to find I think the information? I'll start with the farmers. Okay. You can see kind of more where the fire started. Okay. So heading back to the, the parade grounds, I'm assuming, the market. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you, you go from stall to stall, you know, start him and hawing. Um, how do you want to ask them? Like, find anybody in particular? Um, I'll just start asking around, like, hey, where did these fires start, like, why we're trying to figure out why so maybe we can help you guys but we need to know if like someone's causing it you like, find it been moving it, from one area to another okay in like um, kind of a line most of them kind of they don't exactly laugh you off um but you can tell they're not exactly taking you seriously um mostly the insinuation that you somehow are going to stop an act of nature <laughs> Um, from occurring is it makes a few of them like oh this is just another bard with air between your ears kind of kind of thing, um, but there are one or two that do take you seriously. Um, one specifically appears to be a uh, like a root farmer like rutabagas and, and turnips and stuff like that, and very rotund woman. Um, but she's not rotund in the fat sense. She's rotund in the I will kick your ass if you give me an opportunity kind of way. Um, just all power behind um, behind her body, but she she's very peaceful. Looks like kind of a babushka with the the head tied and stuff like that to help her shade. Um, and she she kind of regards you for a moment. She's like you you seem pretty driven toward this. Um, I mean, last I heard of it, um, it was the wildfires weren't affecting us, but I know a neighbors a few miles down uh, said that they had one. And then there was another one even further down the road. Um, it doesn't seem to be centralized in any particular location, and they're not brush fires per se. So they don't just take up whole swaths of dry brush. And it seems to be almost pointed. Um, they burn super hot. They burn super quick for a day or two, and that's it. Nothing else past it. Okay. Uh, she does give you a rough area. I'm going to flip everybody toward the world map. See if I can get you over here. Yeah, so um, the red arrow kind of points. There's no forest there. These are very sparse forests. Think like tall, thin trees that stretch for a long period of time. Um, if you've ever been in like uh, rural Pennsylvania. Um, thickets. Yeah, thickets. Good yeah. word for it. Thank you. So there's a lot of thickets, and those seem to be what's burning. Um, they run deep, but they're very spacious put it that way so it's not like the big thick deep like mountainous forests they're just like it's not like the you black know, you... forest this is kind of like just you know, a thicket yeah good word for it okay okay um john you did manage to get this general area too um there's a few farming communes that are marked on the map um major roads between them um but other than that it's not too specific all right. Well, it's it's navigation. Yep. Um, Hallis, what exactly are you looking for with your survival check? 
It was more just general, like, what we might need in, in that area. So I'm supply gathering, I guess. Okay. So rations, traps, in case you're out there for a while, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you're picking up just general stuff that you would use for hunting. Um, you're used to this kind of prep work um, from preparing for your caravans. So it's not, you basically already have a mental checklist of stuff that you would need to kind of survive off the road. Um, pick up some fire starters, things like that. You do know the thickets up here um, are not super good to hide brigands. Um, however, you do know that some of the smaller um, raiding type creatures like goblins and kobolds and things like that do like the more rocky mountainous terrains. Uh, toward the Zagos Mountains. They do come out this far. Oh, fun. The thickets itself, um, again, they're not overly large creatures. The biggest thing you really got to worry about is more over toward Deep Reach Peaks with the, the Hill of Mountain Giants. Um, but you're far enough away, you don't really got to worry about that. Mm. So yeah. basic supplies would do. Watch out for wolves, watch out for bears. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Generally good advice for anybody going into a forest. <laughs> Alright, who else Who else wants checks? Who else wants stuff? Did my check bring anything for wishing? Oh, Arcana with your, your can, sorry. Yes. Um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. you take it to a few different places. Um, there's a, a potion maker that actually throws you out of his shop because he's 100% convinced you're fucking with him. Nope. And you're some sort of charlatan trickster that's trying to pull a fast one on him. No, no, no really. There is. I, I've not been able to find any. Enter, no, please. <sighs> also, I'm pretty sure if you walk back into that shop again, uh, you will be kicked out, regardless of who you're with. And add another one to the list. <laughs> um, you do find a rune scriber that seems particularly interested. Um, but he's, as far as you're able to tell, you go to four or five people and just nobody's able to really piece it together. Several suggest opening it. Um, that is but none of them point. can really figure out how. <laughs> One of them even suggests like a can opener. But I'm sure you've tried that already. I, I think I broke one of Gottrim's hammers on it. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> So the insinuation that a can opener would solve your problems is probably very frustrating. All right. Um, I think that wasn't the first thing I tried. Oh, okay. I to would be... like to find... Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. To be fair, I tried to bite it open, but I was in the field at the time. Ha. <laughs> I would like to find a fireplace or a hearth with a bunch of ash, and I would like to add a couple fistfuls of ash to the jar with the salt water. Before Are we go you out. going to drink the salt water this time? No, it's not the jar with the flesh. It's the one that I had oh. the salt water in. A little bit of sand. You could go right to the cello's fireplace and do that if you wish before you I'm, even go. I'm just going to add a couple fistful of ash into it until it's got a really good clump of it and then I'm just going to nod and, and shut the shut the jar again and put it back on my belt. Is anybody going to question it? Nope. No. No. <laughs> Surface people are weird. People I'm who still, sail on water are weirder. I'm still frustrated with my can. <laughs> you have successfully put ash into the... Oh wait, did you actually get salt water after your, your priest told you that it was fake? Yes, I, I got water from the ocean, so no one would ask me. Okay. <laughs> you, Actual salt water, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and keep a note of that, so next time you're in Elysia, you can hunt that guy now. <laughs> oh, he's, he's going to regret the day he was born. Um, you don't fuck with the sailor superstitions. <laughs> um, okay, so is there anything else anybody would like to try to piece together for this? Um, could... Could I roll, like, a history check or anything to see if there's anything connection, like, druids going feral, if there's any, like, legends about that? You can go ahead and roll me Arcana for that. Ooh, fun. Um, does anybody have religion? You guys can roll that, too. Uh, I do as well. Or nature. All of those. You guys can kind of put your heads together okay. to figure out common lore. 
I mean, does anybody would re anybody rather do religion? Because I can do either either religion, arcana, or history. So, I mean, I'm not uh, as the bumpkin of the group. I got nothing. I got none of that. Okay, I'm gonna try. Wait, do you not have religion as a paladin? No, <laughs> I do not. Interesting. He has an intelligence based skill, so. I'm not saying I'm, it's a bad choice. I just normally, whenever I, I when somebody plays a paladin, normally it. they would have religion. But okay, cool. Uh, Anybody else want to roll anything? So I rolled, what is it that we can roll? Um, you can try and convince me of anything, but the the basic three right now are arcana, nature, and religion. So I rolled two sixes in a row. Nice. Going once. Going uh, twice. I don't suppose survival would count if I've if there's like people telling of what not to do when you're running around the woods. Um. Yeah, go ahead. You take it at a disadvantage though, because you're not used to being in forests. That's fair. I figured this is more something. All right, so set you straight. <laughs> All right, so Authrix, you you kind of take the time after being thrown out of um of your potion maker shop, um, kind of thinking about what would cause druids to be rude. Now, granted, there's a whole slew of people. There's druids of all kinds and shapes. Generally, druids um kind of keep to themselves. They pr most of them prefer nature over people. Um, but there's a lot of helpful things that, that druids do. It's not even the, the most like Wait, isolated. Are these, are these part of the wandering dragonborn tribes? Are they like part of the nature tribes? I mean, the nature tribes certainly could have druids okay. in order to source out sources of food and water. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. Um, again, druids, druids can have all types of applications and in life it's just really it's less focused on their druidic powers and more focused on who they follow um things like the followers of Fourhorn will go through and bless harvestable crops make sure that there's a minimal amount of rot make sure they're not being infested with bugs shit like that meanwhile you'll have people like um the followers of kalim the druidic followers of kalim who will go out into the wilderness to prove themselves um, Kalem being the, the god of survival in nature um, hmm. to prove themselves that they don't need anything to, to survive on, almost her, uh, you know hermits, but they are very much at one with the nature around them leaving almost no waste or trail Kalem um, provides exactly, um, so, Kalem provides when you earn it <laughs> so nothing about, uh, like no legends about like them, like diseases causing them to go feral or anything or not specifically diseases, but any religion, any belief can be corrupted. Um, there are various evil deities through the world and things. Uh, evil druids, um, particularly in legend, um, have been known to like lead wolf packs to slaughter villages um, to cause blights among forests and crops. Um, essentially, turning good um, good nature magic into bad nature magic, uh, causing glaciers to speed up over villages, avalanches. Um, <laughs> mudslides, basically like forces of nature, almost with the more powerful ones. Um, in this particular case, simply being rude, snarling, and running away doesn't seem like the worst thing a druid can do, but it's definitely out of character. Huh. Okay. No. Okay. Well, that's weird. Exactly. That's all I've got. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's that's what eleven gets you. Is that's kind of weird. <laughs> Okay. Um, as far as survival, um, Bia, you <laughs> you know that there are, are things in force that have sharp, pointy teeth and can hurt you. There's lots of things, from very big things with bears to very small things with centipedes. It's unsettling to be around a place that has so little ocean and water. Um, I you know, off during survival lessons in my childhood. <laughs> Exactly. Um, you do remember some stuff being raised on the cliffside, um, but 
being raised in almost a tundra type situation of, of sparse grass and rocks is a lot different than being raised in a forest. So you, you know, some things, you know, kind of how to keep yourself out of trouble, but this is, this is a different ball game. If it growls, I hit it. Yeah. Essentially that's, that's what your survival knowledge is boiled down to at this point. You, you wouldn't be able to tell mosses, plants, trails, but fuck, if it's coming at you, you're going to hit it. Uh, Varus, you had, you were just going to say something a little earlier. I was wondering if, uh, would there be a shrine of Shadal out that way? Oh yeah, there's shrines of Shadals all up and down these major roads. Shrine of Maybe whoever's keeping that place up might know more what's going on if the druids are a local problem. Now, are you talking like simple roadside shrines where people can pray I'm for a small like blessing? A or like... Like, there's at least someone keeping the place up. Like a chapel? Okay, like a chapel or a temple nearby. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your biggest two for congregations... Um, would be Madreus and Stromness. I'm not um, talking for... Con I'm talking like, is there something bigger than a roadside shrine you can just leave something at? Like, is there anything where you might have one person and a couple blessings, but not a full-blown church? Um, yeah, there... A way station. You, that, you that's know the for a fact of. that inns are considered acceptable substitutes um, for Shadal shrines because essentially it is the same thing even if they do charge for it. Um, so you can generally find one or two followers working at an inn. Um, it's more of a part-time gig, part-time religion <laughs> than anything. Like they'll, you they'll don't be servers, say. servers, cooks, proprietresses. It, it, it um, is the uh, National Guard. Tunnelers. Religions. Yeah, Boy. essentially. Shit, what does that make me as a, as a paladin? Uh, you're you're a Lieutenant? officer in the National Guard. <laughs> officer. <laughs> Congrats. Um, I mean, but this this is really common for out for of college. the way areas. Um, there's since you're multi. There's a lot of places that are multi theistic, um, and in fact, most of the populace is multi theistic. Um, you can have one in have one person for three gods. You know, just the the quick prayer. You know, the bartender behind the bar splashes some water on you to make sure that you're safe from the rains, and then also prays to Shadal for you. Like it's. You do with what you can, because these kinds of people don't come along and want to do this job. So there are uh, there from your knowledge, there is. Um... Hold well, on a second. There, sure. there, there are people that don't want to deal with shit all. Gee, know, right? imagine that. Yeah, the Huda man, Huda thunk it. Um, roll me. Yeah, roll me religion. Fuck it. We'll go for it. Uh, I hate. Da, da, da. I only hate. <laughs> you, this is, this is a bit far out of your stomping grounds. You don't know of any particular place that would have um, basically a live-in Shadal priest. Um, you know they exist. You just can't pinpoint any place specifically. All right. Well, it's something. Mm -hmm. And the very least, you have your goddesses here, so if you stop in one of the shrines, maybe she'll pop in and be sarcastic towards you. Yeah, because that's what I need. <laughs> the, other thing I would, the, the other thing I would have to say is, would you consider these druids to be, oh, I don't know, lost? Lost as in not following their god, or lost as in actually physically lost? Either's fine. I don't know. Would you? What would you? What, who would you ask to figure that out? That's why I was asking about a Shadal shrine with someone who actually was aware of what was going on. You, you can try. Put it that way. There's definitely nothing that's stopping you from pursuing that. I just. <laughs> I'll try once I'm in the area. There you go. All right. You guys feel confident? Yeah. Any confidence. other last minute? Confidence isn't a word I would use, but it's applicable. <laughs> I guess. Authoris okay. is frustrated and annoyed, so he is par for the course. Okay. 
Bia all has right. upgraded her saltwater binky, so she's okay. Oh. It leveled. <laughs> Your binky That's leveled up. <laughs> I almost wish I would have made the saltwater binky the magic item now. <laughs> no, I still have that. They're attached to each other. Uh, just a reminder, you guys do all have your magic items. Um, take a moment, review what they do. Um, just so that you know, you know, kind of in the back of your head as, as this goes forward. I mean, I'm guessing mine hasn't been uh, uh, doing anything as I've been walking around town. No, no. Gen by and far, usually your scale does not heat up. Um, it's it's more of a worry stone for you than anything for the uh, most part. Yeah. So yeah, I'm always rubbing it. Essentially, like if I'm reading something, I you either see you usually see my, one of my hands inside my robes. Um. Okay. So how do you guys want to get there? You want to rent some horses, rent a carriage? I know you guys had rented a wagon at one point for Gel Call or Get Call. Yeah, but that was out of. Uh... That was Alicia. Tripoint. Yeah. Tripoint. Oh, Tripoint. Yeah, that, that was very far away. And then we uh, vomit cannoned our way to Stromness. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys think if we tell Drac that we think this might be a lead, he'll pay for a wagon? He might even give us a wagon. Heck, he probably has a ton. Yeah, let's ask I'm him. I'm not asking. All right. Who's good at lying? Hello. <laughs> I have a plus six. Oh, I have probably a... be. I have a plus six to deception. You should probably also look at your bard. Hi, bard. I was going to say. <laughs> what up? Fingers over both of them. About to say. Hey, Othric do you two want to do that? I mean, he has the means, and so he should be helping. Cough, cough. <laughs> well, I All right. I, Who's I, going? I'll go. That's all you want to go to? No. <laughs> well, that solved that one real quick. <laughs> I should ask, why don't you want to go? I'll go. <laughs> All right. No. So you guys uh, continue milling about buying your uh, buying the necessary gear. I'm going to assume competence here that you guys have either done this before or you're you're teaming up with Halas, who has done this before, and are kind of moving forward in that regard uh, while these guys are going to um, talk to Drax. So you guys go up to the castle. Um, it's it's dusty as usual. Uh, Gabriel can only do so much to the place while he's running around attending to his master's needs. Um, and it doesn't look like um, Drax mm -hmm. ever really employs too many caretakers of the place. Um, you can, you can assume he probably thinks it's a waste since he doesn't use all of the rooms anyway. Um, as you go back, Gabriel, uh, again, comes back. Let me see if I can find his, I know I have his thing. Yeah, there he is. Mr. Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel. Not a happy looking man. Um, so Gabriel walks out as soon as you guys come up. Uh, he had been informed of your arrival and it greets you again with a, a tired smile. Um, but not unwelcoming. Um, he, he, Seems like he does appreciate your guys' um, appearance once more. And ah, the masters have returned. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any new news um, to report to you. Is there uh, something I can help you with? Uh, well, yes. We uh, again, we were just checking to see. Uh, but we have heard disturbing news about uh, occurrences to the north of here, and we believe they may what, either tangentially or directly be connected to the Ashfall, and we we would like to investigate, and we were wondering if you had any means of transportation we might acquire or, or borrow for our trip. Interesting. Okay. Um, a, he, he takes a moment to think, and you see as his, his downcast vision is pointed at the floor, he gets this, this smile on his face, it's not predatory. It's almost like if your friend is about to pull a prank on you oh, shit. and it's that knowing smile, but it's not unfriendly. And he kind of looks it's... up at you and goes, yes, actually, I know the perfect man. Uh, he turns around and, and scribbles some quick directions down on a sheet of paper and hands it to you and says, go to the northern gate. 
and find a man named Vexation. 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 That's all he is known by, and you will discover it soon enough as to why. Can I do an insight check? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is with the frick? Okay, fine. So what's what's the question? What are you trying to insight? I, I'm trying to see if he is like screwing with us, or if this will actually like help us. Oh no, he's a hundred percent serious. He's there. There is something he knows that he's not telling you, but you don't get the impression that it's to fuck you over. Son of a, okay. Well, Lexi, is there anything that you would like to do with this knowledge? Not particularly. Okay, so you're just gonna Roll take part. vacation's word for it. Part acknowledge. Part acknowledge. You mean what part acknowledge? I have bardic inspiration. Never mind. It's not a thing in this dish. I know. She does have. I know. I know. I know. Though. I'm like, <laughs> well, you, you kind of know. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm meta gaming. You do what you need. I mean, no, it's it's fine, Lexi. I I want to make sure that everybody's helping each other out. You know, suggestions don't have to come from just the player. I'm 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 just saying, as as a bard, you might have heard something, or you might know something around town, or just like heard something i mean i've rolled my check do you want to do like maybe especially a... with the, Sorry. especially with a dude named vexation yes so what would i roll well, let's see um what do you think you would roll what what skills do you think would apply to this particular situation that you would be able to use i don't know okay well let's i mean let's work it out we have the investigation um you have performance. Maybe you've played firm before. Persuasion. I mean, there's a few things. As long as you can convince me of it, she's I'll let you roll remember it. someone. So she's trying to remember history of something. Mm -hmm. I guess I can roll. History. I mean, yeah, I guess I can roll a history check. Okay, go for it. Not to like pressure you, put you on the spot. I just want to make sure that you know, comfortable with your sheet. Ooh, nice. Uh, and a 21 is definitely going to um, ring some bells. So, Othrix, while you look at Gabriel and you kind of get that questioning tilt to your head and look over to Athalia, Athalia has this look on her face of, I can't believe you're doing this. Um, the, the young woman uh, knows that Vexation is a, uh, an interesting character. Uh, he does own a wagon. Um, he just kind of sits there, though. Uh, he has basically a small little shack on the north end of town uh, with simple courier services written on it. Um, no one has ever seen... Um, no one has ever seen the, the tiefling speak. No one has ever seen him leave the shack. But sometime, somehow he has enough gold to continue eating up every night. Nobody knows how. Has a big, tall top hat, and he's dressed very smartly. But he basically just sits in his little shack with his seat, with his feet up. He's sending us to a what works man. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to share any of this with, with Authorix, or are you going to keep this one to yourself for the moment? No, I'll share it. <laughs> I'm not going to re-say what you just said, though. Okay. Describe it to him then. <laughs> um. Well. Are, are you doing this in front of him or? What? Are, are we doing in this front in front of Gabriel? Of Gabriel or are you going to wait until we leave? I'll actually probably wait until we leave. That seems like a better idea. Okay. Okay. So Gabriel looks between you and, and smiles uh, again, his knowing smile and. Um, you seem to have brought him at least a little enjoyment in what seemed to be a hard day. Oh, um, so he is, is there anything else that the, the estate can provide you? I know, um, unfortunately our resources are a bit limited to, with which to help you out, but anything we can do, we will try. Uh, uh, no, that, that, that was all. We, we greatly appreciate your, your help. And, uh, and, uh, I, I look forward to any news we may hear from you. Uh, wish you and your master a good day. 
All right. With that, he he bows and and shows you out. Um, so you have a link to a caravan. How would you like to go from here? Um, I probably, with glancing over, caught caught uh, uh, Thalia's look. So after we go out, do you know anything about this person? Um, not a whole lot. Nobody seems to know a ton about him, as far as I can tell. Uh, but he doesn't do very much. Well, he, you mean he doesn't... He just, he, sorry. He just sits in his little shack. All day. And then goes to dinner. That's it. I think Gabriel <laughs> is pulling our tails. He might be, but let's go give it a shot. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and by our tales, you mean your tale, right? <laughs> Since you're the only one that has one. It's a dragonborn expression, all right? <laughs> I'm trying all to right, be so world building guys here, wanna, all right? All right? <laughs> you guys want to come back and, and explain this to the group? Are you guys all kind of coming back together? Any other big questions or, or thoughts? Uh, I mean, I'm good. I'm oh. good. I'm good. Okay. Um, I think John's still listening. Jan? He stepped out for a second, but I think he's still listening. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, he... Um, so I assume you guys are going to go catch up with Vexation and get on your way? Yeah. We okay. Have to. I think we'll explain so this to the group as well. <laughs> Feel free, by all means. Um, well, good news. We have seemingly acquired transportation via uh, uh, Mr. Grodstone. The um, troubling news is... Uh, I'm not sure how. There's a certain character who sits by the gate named Vexation who our bardic friend informs me is somewhat of a mystery and doesn't seem to even have any transportation. I mean, it's just to save your feet from walking, so I don't really care if we get a ride or not. I mean, if nothing else, it'll be a story we can drink over. <laughs> uh, Go here. Oh, boy. Okay. So, I assume everybody's on their way? Yes. Let's, yeah. okay. let's meet this gentleman. <clears throat> so, as you guys approach the, the northern gates of Stromness, uh, it is not hard to point out where this guy is. Um, when I say it's a shack, it's a well-constructed shack. But think of like a guardhouse, you know, on a border or something like that little, you know, two foot by two foot shack with a roof and windows. And you see a, let me see if I can show this to you all. Okay. As you approach the station, there is a very uh, interesting written out uh, sign in both common and infernal uh, that says vexations carriage services. And a very interesting. Can you guys see that? No. No. Right, mm -mm. Go ahead nope. And that up then. Boom. How about now? There we oh go. Oh god, Next. we got an established character. Damn it. So uh, as you guys approach um, the shack itself, you see a very again fancily dressed uh, older middle aged tiefling. Um, again, has the hat. He's got a cigar in his mouth. Um, his feet are up, and he's reading a book. And uh, as he approaches, as you approach, he kind of looks up at you. What is the title of the book? Oh, you know what the worst part of that is? I uh, I just saw a one d one hundred chart of fantasy book names, and you and I thought to myself, that is it. never going to come up in a game. That I will run the day that it fucking happened. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Just come on with that. <laughs> I don't even have to. Because it's, it's, dude, it's, it's so good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, 
Send that to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a moment to find it just because I think it's it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, exactly. Send that to me as well. Like we'll post it on the chat. Here we go. Random fantasy novel title generator. Title generator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna post it to Ash's chat just so you guys have, or uh, RPG talk. Got it. So this particular this particular book is uh, known as the Writer of Shaman, uh, with very fancy uh, gold calligraphy on the on the spine. Um, the book seems to be not in immaculate condition, um, but it is a it's a fancy book. Um, certainly, it matches his his clothing, and he seems to be doing pretty well for himself. Um, but as as you approach, he simply looks up at you with um, eyes that are about as black as onyx and irises that are as red as fire um, and just kind of stares at you. It's about this awkward too. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think we're all role playing this one nicely. No, I'm about to say I'm I, in character and out of character. I'm very, um, Yeah. I'm just going to step forward. Your vexation, right? Oh, thank God. He simply nods. Uh, amazing. So, uh, we hear you get transportation. He nods again. All right. So, uh, we need to get up north to where the... He's going to look back at the party where the fires are? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Wild can fires. Get us... Can you get us up there? He kind of raises his eyebrow and shifts his head sideways a minute at the mention of, of uh, wildfires. Uh, Gabriel Grodstone sent us. I kind of poke my head from around him. Gotcha. Okay, so there's a, um, a kind of a, not a relief expression, but understanding that crosses his, his head as he kind of nods a few times and basically like, yes, I'm familiar with that name. Um and he simply kind of looks between you all, eyebrows raised, expectant expression, as though, like, what do you want me to do with this information? Tell him we need a, a wagon or some sort of transportation. Our, uh, my dear dragon friend here is, uh, Born. Bad, bad knees and all that. So, uh, do you have a wagon or something that would help us out? He, uh, places his feet down onto the, uh, from off the counter that he has very neatly folds the, uh, the page over in the book, very measured, uh, expressions and movements. Okay. It's, does he put a uh, bookmark in or does he fold the top of the page he, down the quarter? He dog ears it. Oh, I hate him. Son of a bitch. <laughs> he's he's, 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 he's an evil aligned um, character. We have to destroy him. Uh, <laughs> Authorix, you would actually notice that there are several books, um, looking at around the same kind of condition, uh, both with bookmarks and dog ears in them, um, kind of just leaning up against the side of the desk. Um, he, he puts his, his feet down and places his hands on his knees and or rests his arms on his knees for a moment, looks up at uh, Valis, and, Varys, sorry, and simply just makes kind of a, a, a rubbing motion with his, his fingers as though to indicate payment. Uh, Authorix, pay the man. Uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, the, the payment would come from uh, uh, the Lord Drax estates, and he would be able to compensate you. Um, would you have anything that signifies that, such as a piece of paper? <laughs> Do I have anything that signifies that, like a piece of paper? Yep. Mr. Gabriel, Gabriel Bradstone handed you a piece of paper with his information. Okay, on. yes. Yes, I do. And I hand it over to him. I'm sorry. Okay. So he simply takes it, reads it for a moment, nods to himself, folds the paper, and places it inside of his coat pocket. Stands up, very gently uh, closes the door behind him, takes a very ornate-looking key out from the other side of his pockets, locks the door, and just motions you to follow him. Locks the door and of a starts. very small shack. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and essentially just starts I like this walking guy. directly out of the gates. Uh, I'm going to follow him. Yeah. Okay. I follow. 
as you guys continue, as you guys follow him, uh, you notice that he's leaving. Um, he doesn't veer off to the stables outside, the various stables outside of the gates. In fact, as he continues walking, he ignores them entirely and just keeps walking down the road. Please let me to Madras. Please let me owl bear mounts. Please let me owl bear mounts. So you guys make it probably a, a good distance away from the city gates to the point where nobody can really see uh, you guys as a group and you can't make out any individuals from the gate. We're going to be murdered, aren't we? <laughs> yep. This is how the mugging starts. You kind of see Vexation look over his shoulder at all of you and just have this kind of wry smirk on his face uh, before he just stops in the middle of the... Uh, in the middle of the road and he turns around kind of motions you all to step back for a moment i take like 10 steps back i yep. i kind of go behind Bia. okay so he he reaches behind his hair uh and starts fiddling with something on the back of his neck i put my hood on um <laughs> pulling it down, revealing that he has a necklace. Mm. And all it has is a wheel with spokes on it. It's, it looks like just a little pendant. Um, as he does so and brushes his hair back, you notice that there's a large scarf around his neck um, that's underneath the, the tie and the, um, the shirt. As he does so and brings mm. the pendant out, he kind of makes eye contact with Othrix mm -hmm. in specific and smiles, and then tosses the um, the necklace down on the ground. Can I do an arcana so, check? Absolutely. Cool. This this is interesting to Arthrix Arth right now. Uh, uh, I'd like to roll a perception check as well. Sure. If anybody would like to roll anything, go for it. Finally. Yeah, 16. <laughs> um, so... Authrix, okay, perceptions, perceptions, arcana, okay. Um, Authrix, you are suddenly acutely aware of the necklace. Not many people decide just to throw their jewelry on the ground. And you start getting the inkling that this is a lot more than it seems. Um, he's obviously some not a spell caster. You don't feel any magic coming off of him specifically. And especially since a lot of spells have a, vo a very vocal component to them, you know that he's just not able to do this. However, um, Hallis and Varys, you both know that the, this, this wheel looks like a miniaturized version of an actual wagon wheel. Um, as it arcs through the air, there's no glinting except on the very outside where it looks like a silt, like um, a metal um, has been tacked onto the outside of a wooden wheel. Um, but the necklace is the, uh, the actual rope that holds the pendant is is like triple threaded rope. It is not going to break unless somebody takes a knife to it. Hmm. Um, as soon as the wagon wheel hits the ground, uh, it just kind of stays there for me. You see it looping around itself. And he just sits there looking at you all expectantly. I don't think I'm going to fit on that. Oh, that's what yours? Um, yeah. I More to see if you can figure out what happened to his voice box. Okay, you you don't even know if anything did happen. All you see is the scarf, uh -huh. which is then quickly covered up by his hair again. And just his insistence that he doesn't talk. <laughs> Either that or he just doesn't like talking. Um, as someone familiar with the arcane arts, I'm actually going to walk up and try to see if I can touch it and see what his reaction is. Uh, make me a reaction. Or not a reaction. Um, God. I'm going to have... bump into the invisible okay. wagon. Guys, I'm going to be right back in a minute. <laughs> sure. Um, what do you... Make me a dexterity save, please. Oh, shit. Okay, not bad. Alright, you manage to... As you start approaching it, and you realize that that wheel is getting a lot bigger. And a, a very quickly. And there's... 
turning it's turning black at the same time as things are starting to grow out of it oh crap and very quickly a jet black carriage with stainless steel filigree has appeared in front of you uh that would be enough to fit all of you with a set of two horses in front of it again totally jet black uh with green eyes standing between you and them and all he does is simply walk around get up into the into the driver's seat and look back at you guys i take a swig from my flesh jar <laughs> and then i get on the carriage again the wry smile has not left his face it seems like he's taking particular enjoyment out of this uh Authorx is actually really excited at this <laughs> Oh, so, oh, so it, it is a, oh, it's a, 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 a oh, oh, I've heard of these, oh, oh, I've yet, yet to see one, they were used in the, in some of the higher echelons with the, uh, uh, with the draconic houses, yes, uh, very, very rare, very, very hard to find, it could take years. Pothrix, uh, wipe your mouth. What, what? <laughs> wipe your mouth. No, no, he is drooling a little bit at this, yeah. Varys is just gonna hand him a rag. Seriously, man, we're technically in public. I, that's, well, I I know that, but <clears throat> yes, you're right. <laughs> it's a very nice carriage, and he walks in. Vex tips his hat and uh, proceeds to round every. I assume everybody's getting in. I thought you yep. said he never leaves his place. Yes. Oh, he does when he needs to. Just people don't look for him when he's gone. Interesting. I'm going to get into a comfortable napping position. Okay. Uh, Authorix is furiously scribbling in his notes. Oh, wait, no, I do macrame. Macrame. What? <laughs> With the pieces I got from the spiderlings, I want to start trying to make little bracelets. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By all means. I'm not even sure what you would roll for that. Um, it's involving our hands, so like dexterity? Yeah, I would I would say a dexterity check for uh, for crafting it. Uh, what is everybody else doing? You're you're in a. This is this is this not guy. a normal. Obviously, it's not a normal carriage, but even its appearance is a little unsettling. I gotta find a picture of this somewhere. <laughs> Varus is gonna make the sign of Shadal going, and wonders never cease. <laughs> we live, we live in an age of miracles and wonders. You okay. maybe. So the well, trip yes, itself I can make um, magic. is probably going to take about three to four hours um, via this carriage, which is surprisingly soft ridden. You didn't expect that. Um, you're not feeling a lot of the regular bumps and, and jars that you normally would. Like, they're still there, but it's a lot, a lot more muted. Can we see out the windows um, or are there windows? Oh, yeah, abs okay. absolutely. There's windows. It's again, it's it's just think black interior. Like, uh, especially with the, the seats and stuff, they're very comfortable. Um, silver filigree, um, gray trim anywhere. Um, it, it's a very dark carriage. Um, it's very nice, almost opulent. Hmm. Opulence. They has it. They has it. Would you like to keep an eye out for a Shadal Shrine on the way up? Yeah. Uh, okay. Authrix is um, also keeping a hand on his uh, scale just in case. Um, it's it's heated up a little, huh? but you can tell that it is in reference to the carriage, which you already know is an older relic, uh... as you were chanting about. <laughs> More scribbling. Oh lordy. So you want to tell Vexation to watch out for a shrine? Yeah. Okay. Should all uh, should all uh, Vexation looks down and kind of nods his understanding and 
whips the uh, the horses to go a bit faster. Um, can everybody make me a perception check? Sure. Mm -hmm. Perception? Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. Wow, look at me. I'm actually doing hey, all hey, right hey, tonight. Hey, hey, don't eat that. <laughs> but it looks delicious. Uh, Ostrich, various of our uh, beer. Oh, nice. Okay, that is everybody. Hey. Okay, hey, so go ahead. Oh, I just need the link to his stream. Oh, sure. Um, Varus and Bia. Bia, you're exceptionally in tune with this, um, considering how much this is kind of putting you on edge. This is this is this is not natural. This is not the way of the sea. This is an abomination. You have your saltwater binky next to you in your lap the whole way as your macrame, and the only reason you're macrame is to take your mind off of the fact that you're hurtling along in a jet black coffin, essentially. Um, it doesn't make it any easier on you to hear the sounds of the road, but not hear any sounds from the horses. There's not even a gallop. No nope, breathing, nope, 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 nope. no snorting, no, no troubled neighs. It's just the crack of the whip or the reins. And the sounds of the carriage on the road itself. Varys, no. you also notice this. Yeah. Var Varys doesn't look at. Is Bia like kind of visibly freaking out? I macrame quicker and take another swig of my flesh jar and just grimace. Wait, you know, jar. I hold an old rumor once upon a time that with these kind of carriages, if you actually view what's riding them, you become one of the things pulling the carriage. Oh, you are an evil person. Is that true? <laughs> I look at him, and have I heard this superstition before? Um, roll me a history check. Have I heard this superstition before? <laughs> roll me a history check. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sarge, can I? Can I? You can roll deception. Go for it. No. I... Can old you? Old drow. Old drow superstition. Oh, okay. Um. Both of you have not heard this one before. I'm going to immediately smear a bit of my ash water on my face in hopes that maybe that's how I deal with this one. <laughs> so Darius is just saying all of this with his eyes closed, just rocking along with the cart. Do, do you have any specific instances of this? Any names, dates, uh, uh, locality? <laughs> Deeper than you'll ever go. Is there a cure? <laughs> yeah. I love the two ends of the spectrum, too. <laughs> One is terrified, the other is overly interested. Yeah. Varys is going to point at the goggles. Yeah, pair of these. <sighs> okay, yeah. I'm eyeing the goggles, rather. <laughs> Try it, and I'll make sure you wind up pulling this carriage. Okay, add that to the list of things to acquire. Varys is going to pull the goggles back over his eyes. It is very bright outside. Yeah, that's why he's wearing them. Not that they know that. <laughs> well, drows... I, 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 I know drows don't like sunlight, so... Oh, yeah, and it is a bright, sunny day. <laughs> he's got the line, just... Yeah, pair of these. If you can't glimpse what's pulling it, you'll be fine. So, theoretically, <laughs> if you could feel what was carrying them if you kept your eyes closed, and... Uh, ooh. I had a cousin who tried that once. I think, yeah, he kept all his fingers. I had a cousin that tried that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had a cousin that tried that. Oh, he kept all his fingers, but he did open his eyes when it bit him. Oh, fascinating. D d was it, uh, uh, what kind of teeth did he feel? Jesus. I don't know. I was being smart and looking the other way. Mm. Very intelligent. I heard a yelp and my cousin was gone. Mm. Is it like sirens? Can you do the same thing to avoid being pulled in by sirens? I wouldn't know what a siren is. Well, I don't know what they look like either. You're not supposed to look at them. Well, I hear they go wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> 
macrame <laughs> increases in intensity. Uh, that's my it's pun okay, for the yeah. evening, gentlemen. You might be a little too big for them to possess. I swear to God, Elf was in. Swear to me! Half Elf? <laughs> Uh, half elf traits. What is, Sorry, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the elf in the player's guide, and I'm not. You mean the seeing drow? It. Yeah, yeah, it's in the, the it's in the elf a... section, but it's like in the last page of the elf section. It's like oh, a box. there we go. I'm yep. just looking yep. in the wrong damn place. Yeah, I've got a character in one of my games who's a drow right now. I keep looking back on that. <laughs> elf, high elf, really high elf. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, Wacky tobacco. Okay. <laughs> now, just as a just as a reminder, John, I I had to look this up because I could have sworn there was something. Um, you do have disadvantage on attack rolls and perception checks that rely on sight in the daytime, or in I bright gotcha. sun, I should say. So okay. he uses. I, I forgot that. So. Um. Okay. Anyway, so vexation takes you guys along. Um. Obviously, anybody who wasn't involved in that particular, who didn't get uh, past the perception check, you guys are just watching this going about. Um, I'm sure either entertainedly or worriedly. Um, but eventually, you do approach a um, a town on the southern. Uh, I'm sorry, probably around Midway, a little bit south of this. Um, it's when I say town, I use the term very loosely. It's a collection of, of houses, a hamlet, if Probably. you will. Yep. Yeah. Um, like five, four or five of them. One of them looks like an inn. There's a well right next to the road and a small shrine of Shadal, uh, next to the, um, when I say small, I'm talking like, it's not much bigger than the well itself. Um, there's various trinkets and stuff that have been offered, um, to, for safe passage, um, there's a few different types of beads and 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 um, crafted items hanging off of the the actual sigil itself. Um, it's it's not worse for wear. It looks like somebody's actually taking care of it. You probably assume they're in that small little hamlet. Uh, vexation pulls up uh, around the um, the well itself uh, and invites you guys to get up. I am. Out of there as quick as I can get up and fling myself from the carriage. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Bia. If either of you actually look, you'll see a very humored smile from Vexation. I'm not looking in that direction. I'm not risking it. <laughs> I, I step out with a sigh and I give a polite bow to our carriage driver. Uh, thank you. That was uh, quite wonderful. Uh, would... Will we be able to rely on your services to get back? Uh, he pats the pocket that you saw him put the, um, the the certificate into. I think his time is well and truly paid for at this point. Ah, excellent. All right then, and uh, again, thank you. That was ah, oh, it was quite an experience. I, I I will be I will be writing about it in one of my ledgers. You you kind of see him roll his eyes and nod in that you're all right now you're starting to bore me kind of way as he motions you away with his hand. Stop drooling over the ghost wagon. Let's go. It's it's not a ghost wagon. It is a, a, a vacana of at least the second age of expansion. I'm Once just... everybody is out, does anybody look back at the wagon? Uh, I do because I'm trying to explain it. Oh, he um, says, "Screw it! I'll look back." All you see is vexation standing there and. See buckling the, uh, the thing back behind his neck. I'm gonna give him a nod and just carry on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, as as you guys, where do you guys want to go? Again, there's a few small houses. Um, it looks like there's a, a, a horse hitched up in front of the quote unquote inn. Uh, um, what's the name of the seems inn? Seems to be there. You don't see one. Oh. Okay. My kind of place. There's just hitching posts. Hitching posts and troughs. Two talkatives. You might want to go uh, ask around to see if they know anything about the fires. Who, who are the talkative ones? You and the <laughs> bard. Damn it. Varys <laughs> is just making his way towards the doors. I need a real drink. 
I'll say bar. Like, I need several. Here. It's in the job description. As you guys start walking into the inn, uh, you do notice that as you kind of look back, because Vexation isn't really following you. Um, you see that he has uh, put up a small folding chair <laughs> next to the trough, has his feet up again, and has another book in his hands. I like this man. As you go in, it is a um, essentially a, a tiny tavern. Um, there's one or two tables. Um, there's uh, a place. Uh, there's an actual bar itself where a few people are sat at. You see uh, two horses hitched outside, and there's two people currently drinking, um, a human and a half orc. Um, they're both kind of hunched over. They look like farming, you know, very rough and tumble kind of people. Um, or I should say salt of the earth kind of people, not rough and tumble. Um, and a, uh, a very broad uh, tavern mistress behind it. She's got kind of a grimace on her face as the, the newcomers walk in. I do have to ask, though, what are you all wearing? My usual... Traveling clothes? Uh, my Same thing in my drawing. Yeah, okay. my coat. Put, put See the down. profile picture. Yeah. Better, Anita's better pants, question. New sh- no shoes. Is anybody wearing armor? No. Yo. Nope. I got scales, nope. yo. I have it, but I'm not wearing it. Okay. I have John. Leather armor. On. Leather armor. Yep. Leather armor. Okay. So you two, uh, so the, the one, you two would really be the ones that stand out. Um, Lexi, I assume your traveling clothes are a bit more fancy than other people's. Honestly, with how much they've been worn, probably not. Okay. Um, and uh, Mr. Othrix, I would assume yours are a bit more scholarly and less dust traveled. Uh, they, yeah, they're a little worn around the enge- edges, but they, it is. It it is definitely more the robes of uh, uh, Silver Shore. Yeah, exactly. Academic Silver Shore. Like y- you could recognize it. it is definitely of a little bit higher genteel class. Yeah, Silver Shore fashion is very bright and heavy. <laughs> lots of fur, lots of colors, lots of nice fabric. Yes. Um. Well, while, while it's not as like heavy, <laughs> it is definitely along those lines. So what I'm hearing is is that you guys look out of place. Very out of place. Well, he's awkward. Yeah. He always looks out of place. <laughs> so the um, the mistress looks between you all. Um, she's got her hair in a big tight bun on the top of her head. Um, she's not the prettiest thing to look at. Um, it, but it has. it looks like she's getting up there in years. Big pushed in nose. Large chin. Um... But she kind of, she seems like she's part of, or at least the owner of this establishment. She kind of looks at you all and squints a little bit. As I assume you all go take a seat, or do you want to sit at the bar? I'm going to take a seat. Bar. I'm going to take a seat at the bar. Okay. Wait, if everybody's going to the bar, I'm going to the bar. I'm going to go up to the bar. I'm not leaving the group. There is not enough seats for all y'all. I, I called dibs. Never mind. I go to it to find a table with enough room for everybody. I still go to the bar. Okay. So, Othrix is going to the bar. John, you said you're going to the bar? Let's see. Okay. How many so seats various. are available at the bar? Two. Oh. Yeah. You have the two farmers, they're the two salt of the earth guys, and then two other seats. And then there is two four top tables in one of the corners of the room. Yeah, Othrix is and going to nice, the bar. Yeah. Nice big fireplace. It's currently not lit. It's too warm. Okay, so you sit down, and the uh, the two farmers, you're sitting right next to the half-orc, and they both kind of look over, yet yeah, you specifically, Othrix, yeah. and kind of give you the up and down, like, what are you doing here, city boy, kind of look. You got a party mouth. You got a purred of mouth. Hey, I've been on many an archaeological dig, all right? I am I have gotten my claws dirty. I am I am I am part of the soil as well. Do you say that to them? No. 
Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so nobody's really offering anything. Lots of suspicious looks. Uh, a, a drink for the uh, drinks for the group, please. I assume that means all y'all. Mistress says. Kind of peers yeah. over at the uh, the table that just sat down. Please and thank you. Oh, thanks. Doesn't have any gold. I have <laughs> I have some copper and some silver. I just don't have gold. Well, good for you. This is only about five copper a piece. I'm not really going to make you guys keep. <laughs> about to say, if gold. we're paying gold for beer, we are not buying beer here. Oh yeah, uh, you are very unimpressed with the quality of the beer. I assume all of you. Uh, it okay. is it's, it is basically the next best thing to water. Um, we're talking like either Foster's or Bud Light or Miller Light. Um, Authorist is almost offended. Hey, that's what you get. Um, can I ask y'all what you are, uh, what brings you to this neck of the woods? You still got a lot of daylight left, so you could have hit one of them other ones down the road. Burning shit. Towards the ask... crest. <laughs> what, what my companions mean to say is we have heard uh, rumors that there appears to be uh, fires appearing out of nowhere in this area. Is that correct? As far as I know it. Uh, do, do you know whereabouts they are starting? In the forest. If you want to roll an insight check, yeah. Go for uh, it. yeah. <laughs> GM, can I use that trait of mine, the folk hero? Sure, Jane, absolutely. The man they go. Uh, I, I'm assuming that you don't have like Shadal's sigil, pl you know, plaster all over your armor or anything. No, but I'm just kind of gonna tap the counter with the because uh... I've got Shadal's ring. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna kind of tap the counter with it. I'm kind of here, uh, something about some druids that have lost their way. Oh, uh, we're getting an echo I, out of We think the guys. fires might be related. Sorry, I'm too close to like Sam Porter a drink. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, that's better. I'm not doing that bad, am I? <laughs> uh, inside. No, um, it's just soda. Wow, I don't know um, a darn thing. Yeah, you're, as far as you know, she is just legitimately doesn't know what's going on around her um, as far as the fires go. However, um, John, when you kind of tap your, your sigil on the table, your, your ring, she looks down at it. Mm, okay. It gets a little, her face softens a little bit. The, uh, the orc next to, uh, sorry, the half orc next to, uh, uh, Othric seems to s sits back and sighs a little. It seems like he's physically relaxing. Um, and that's when you guys noticed that both of them were a bit more tense than normal. You'll have to forgive my friend. He's uh, new to all this. I, Ain't I, no problem at all. I've been out in the field. We Othrix, thank the kind people for the beer and order another one. Thank you for the beer. Maybe you have another. <laughs> Surely. We'll pour another one for you. So I know it ain't the best, but we try and take care of our shrine, but whatever we can offer. It reminds me of home. That's all it needs to do. Certainly, we don't see many of your kind here, though, or yeah. at all. Are we in the southern part if you... of Dungeons and Dragons now? I just came up with an accent. <laughs> Fuck off. Varys <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is gonna shrug and point the ring. Yeah, well, you know how it goes. Um, a, a drow specifically. Yeah, he's gonna point. <laughs> he's gonna gesture to the ring. Yeah, well, you know how it goes. I saw uh, Garrett. Post in oh, chat. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, oh, hey. I was making a Tropic Thunder joke. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, you <laughs> people? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> um, yeah. Anything we can we can do to assist. I mean, obviously we can't do anything for free, but uh, as nah. far as wildfires go, it's we've had people come in and out telling stories, and some of the farmers here are at least worried about it, but we ain't. I hadn't heard nothing specific besides in a northward direction from here. Um, what kind of what kind of stories? Oh, just say you know, one day everything's fine, and the next day corn's all on fire. It's just 
like that. Nothing. It, and it doesn't. She kind of stops to think about it for a moment. Like she hasn't really pieced everything together yet. She just kind of hears the stories, and you know, they go. This seems to be kind of the watering hole for the farming community right. in this area. Well, um, and she thinks about it, and she's like, "Well, I think the only strange thing I can really put a finger on now that I actually, you know, stop and think about it, um, there's no real reason for the fires to start." Oh. Like. Mind if I share a little theory with you? Yeah, by all means. We got time. I ain't going nowhere. Uh, I heard a rumor that some druids have been scaring people, being real, ornery, and antisocial up around here. And uh, my best figuring is they've uh, they've lost their way and they're taking it out on the farmers. Now, of course, you're going to keep this to yourself. We don't need farmers causing an angry mob up around here. You see both the half-orc and the human kind of look over at you. Like, really? We're sitting right here. Kind of look More on their you face. Two. You guys seem like reasonable people. I can't speak for everyone in your community. Fair enough. Mm. Half work drinks, especially when you start uh, endangering someone's livelihood. It's a wrong thing, but these druids just lost their way, and I plan to set them right. Well, me and Othrix here. That is our goal. <laughs> As the other three in the corner look out, like what? <laughs> All right, well, if that's your, that's your bidding. Um, I actually don't know how y'all got here. Your, your walk or something? We that should all provide. You know how it goes. <laughs> well played. Can, can we give him inspiration for that? Yeah, actually, I'd be I'd be down <laughs> for that. Good call, Josh. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> should all provide. <laughs> all right. Um. So yeah, she um. John, you have a map, correct? Yes, I do. Maybe uh, maybe she would like to see it. Yeah. Now, seeing as you've heard all the rumors around here, think, he, and he's just going to hold it up, think you could maybe uh, you find folks who maybe uh, at least give me a general direction because there's a lot of woods up here, and my boots aren't that good. <laughs> well, the, um, the, the, the two farmers kind of lean in. It's, it's a nice-looking map. You know, it's definitely, you can tell that the human is more impressed with, like, how it looks. But the orc's actually looking at it like, okay, yeah, I kind of know where some of this is. Oh, wait, that's, um, that's, that's, uh, um, Tower Rock right there. That's next to the, uh, the Henderson's property. And the, uh, the, the woman, the mistress looks down. She's, yeah, okay, I see where this is now. All right. Um, so she kind of motions vaguely. Uh, around it, it's like, well, most of the fires start around this area here. Um, there were two. Was it the Hendersons that had the problem, or was it the Fishers? I think the the Yarteths had some too. Okay, so the last few days we had what three fires? Yeah, here, here, and here. And you point out to it. Now the map itself does not show anything in those areas other than just kind of general wilderness. Um, but she's like, I think now, again, now that I'm looking at it, there's, I think there's a hunting trail here that goes by all these properties. Hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. And the, the half work kind of like looks at it and shrugs. He's like, I, I don't go out past there too often. So I, I wouldn't know, but kind of, kind of weird that they go along just that direction hand the map back to you. Well, that sounds about right. Uh, why would it be weird that they would go that direction? Nobody, uh, we're farmers. Like, we hunt every now and then, but it's not enough for an actual trail. So none of us really know. Um, it's kind of strange that somebody would be following it. I reckon your druid idea might have some weight. Hmm. So there's enough traffic to actually create a trail. Hmm. Barely. Interesting. I mean, in a thicket like I'm this, your definition you know, of trail and these folks' definition of trail is a little different. Yeah, Hallis would probably be able to to track on that trail, but Arthurix, I don't think you'd know. Oh pfft, no. <laughs> Welcome back, Bells. I, you guys, your names are so close. I will consistently get them confused. <laughs> I'm 
I imagine we actually start working together on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So how is guys... the show? <laughs> you guys can't imagine how difficult it was when you were handing out blankets. It's like, no, wait, that's that's the one with the H. That's the one with the V. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well. You guys want to get some food in you? Before you head out? Yep, the virus is going to buy some food for everyone. Buy another drink. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's it's subpar. You only got to throw a few copper at it. Um, let's just call it 10 copper for like two drinks and a, a meal for everybody. All right. Um, if you're keeping track, I yep. don't really care. I am. I, um, but that's because Varys believes in those little amounts. Um, does anybody have anything else they'd like to ask or inquire? I, I don't want to leave anybody out. Not particularly. I think everything's been covered. Anything else other than fires going on weird around here? Um, not that not that I know of. Um, I mean, this is the road up to King's Crest, so we get some of the dwarven traders uh, in the Zagos Mountains up there. Um, but again, this place isn't super stopped by. Um, we're conveniently in between uh, two more populous ends. Um, you know, because you can get to most of the way to the King's Crest from Stromness in a day. So there's an inn up that way, and then there's an inn closer to the, the fork in the road um, that most people stop at. We're really just here for the farmers. Other than that, I haven't heard much. Well, Sorry. if you hear anything, uh, well, you know, this will probably be back in if we don't find anything. All right. Well, we'll have uh, we'll have some some, I guess, warm seats depending on the night. <laughs> watch out for uh, watch out for Thursdays though. Everybody comes in for then, barely have a seat in the house. Oh, it sounds like my kind of place. Also, you guys might not want to bother the chief thing. He seems to be enjoying his book. Is there a jazz night Thursdays? Is that what it is? I'm sorry, Tieflin. Ignore him. Uh, one of our compatriots uh, understands he might not be... He's not a people person. Okay. She kind of looks at you like that's an... Uh, like uh, That whole con piece of the conversation was just super odd, but kind of shrugs like, alright, I mean, not the weirdest thing I've seen today, and continues about her business. <laughs> Alright, so we got a direction, we got some information, we got food and drink. But we didn't find out about Jazz Night. <laughs> Let's just say their their equivalent of Jazz Night is when somebody pulls out the harmonica. It's blues. Always blues. Always blues. Yeah. Got that deep old country blues. As an appreciator of the blues and jazz, this hurts me a little bit. <laughs> Goblins ain't my wife. <laughs> there it is. There Pearl it is. Holder stole my dog. <laughs> the coal boats took my carriage. Turn, turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> D and D blues aside. How do you guys want to proceed from here? Kind of got a direction. You got a vague recollection of a hunting trail. You got some locations of the fires themselves. Uh, what and time information that there? Um, you set out. I'm gonna say around lunchtime. It okay. Took you about three to four hours to get out there. So four or five in the afternoon. It's gonna be twilight and handful of hours. Do we want to try this at night? That's what I'm worried about. Get to the places where the fires were in back before it gets too dark. At least check them out during the day. Okay, true. Do it while there's still light. Hey, uh, madam, I turned to the bartender. Mm -hmm. Oh, what yes. What time of day do the fires seem to start? Oh, it's not during the day. They just tend to happen, and suddenly they wake up in the middle of the night, and there's a gigantic fire in the middle of their field. I say we leave now. Let's get going. With that bit of info, there is urgency. <laughs> okay. I'm going to need survival checks if you guys are heading up into the wilderness. Oh, wow. This is going to be beautiful. Oh, no. I... 
I have that. Do I have that? <laughs> Shit. Uh, uh, hey! Uh. <laughs> I did really well for not having that, okay? Alice, so, buddy. Falia, you, you know enough to stick close to the people who know what they're doing. Um, you may not be super fond of being in forests or, or out in the wilderness, but you at least have done it and are comfortable enough to go, you know what you're doing, I'm staying next to you. Um, Varys and Hallis seem to kind of take the lead. Um, Bia, you're, again, sticking pretty close by. Uh, Varys seems to kind of almost take to it like a natural, though. Like, he's just right out in it. Hallis, you're a bit unsure. Um, you've never really been in this, at least these particular woods before. Um, you mostly keep to the roads with your caravans. Tunnels and uh, trees. It's all the same at the end. Various, you're, you're pointing out a couple different things as, as they walk by. How is you're more trying to keep oriented, put it that way. Like, keep everybody on the straight. Various is like, oh yeah, and there's these types of bushes, and oh, I've, I've only read about those kind of thing. Did you ever know, try to tr track yes. someone through a pitch black tunnel? Noticing the variances in dirt is important. He keeps seeing Arthrix go for berries, so he keeps having to get distracted by Arthrix. <laughs> like, <laughs> stop it. it. <laughs> but, 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 it, it's they're colorful. They have to be edible. You, no. <laughs> I like the fact that you tied that together with both nines. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not doing bad because I did bad. I'm doing bad because you did bad. <laughs> you know, distracted, keeping him from being more distracted. Pulling him out from razor weeds, things like that. Ow, 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 ow. Stop. <laughs> Should we let him touch that wasp nest? No, probably not. That'll be good for him. <laughs> All right. And um, I thought I was bad on land. So you guys managed to uh, to make it a, a pretty good distance, um, probably a couple miles. Um, you're you're glad you got some some food in you before you left because it certainly would have started becoming an issue further out. You got. Um, you guys are kind of marking your trail as you go, making sure that you know everything is you, you can easily follow it back if need be um and you start wandering onto the field properties themselves um is there anyone in particular i mean there were three of them um i guess they they would go from more of a northeast to north northeast to north from where you were i mean i guess and the most recent sorry. happened to the north so it kind of it's moving up northward between the properties. Follow it chronologically? Yeah, start with the oldest, get to the newest. Okay. <laughs> What's the next farm, like, off of the information we have, is there another farm along that path that hasn't been hit yet? Um, you don't really know where the path is. That's the problem. Your map doesn't mark a hunting trail. And the mistress just kind of gave you a, a general path. Um, she herself didn't know, and neither did the farmers. They're like, we know of it, but we don't know how it twists and turns. You can assume that there's another property line going along that direction, but there's two or three farms to choose from. You're either going to have to find the trail or make a best guess. All right. Hmm. Let's try to find the trail and see what happens. Yeah. Should we all... Okay. Uh, what would you guys like to use to find it? Investigation for me. Okay. What are you investigating? <coughs> Sorry, just hang on. Told oh. you not to smell the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> they smell so pretty. Um, <laughs> I'm going to see if I recognize... Uh, obvious signs of travel because, like, when you're in the woods, you you can tell if there's a deer path in the woods. It just it, it's once once you stumble across it, you can see the definite line. So I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna look for that. All right, uh, Bia, what would you like to to be doing during this time? That's a perception check. Yeah. Um, survival. I'm gonna try to see if I can like remember 
few times I paid attention and see if I can, you know, see well-worn or a place that would be the easiest way to walk through, etc. Okay. You can also um, okay. substitute that for, like, uh, cartographic knowledge. Like, you can look at the map and be like, oh, there's some weird divots here kind of thing. Like Maybe, maybe you I have read a lot of maps as a captain. Yep. Lexi, what's the you're doing? Um, she'll be helping um, Arthrex, but I was going to roll nature instead. Okay, so roll your nature to help his investigation. Yeah, just because I know I've been out in the wilderness before. I kind of know what a trail looks like. Do, do I get sure. uh, Do I get with advantage you, you, then? Yeah, if she makes it, you would get an advantage on the check. Okay. Okay. Um, John? Varys, what's Varys doing? Do, do I gonna, roll? gonna take another crack at survival. Okay, and then um, Hallis. I'm just gonna keep my eyes open. So perception. Perception. Okay, so yeah, if she made it, go ahead and roll again, uh, she and then take whatever's seven. higher. She rolled a seventeen, I guess. So yep. did you make? Okay. Yep. So you would go. Yes, she did. Go ahead. Okay, so let me do the investigation again. See if you can get higher. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. So I mean, you you kind of see Othrix and 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 Athalia kind of start pairing off and you know motioning toward you know very obvious signs. Um, this does help. Um, Varys and uh, Hallis start pinpointing more locations, but Hallis, you're again trying to get, you know, Othrix to pay attention, like, watch where you're walking, you know, you almost hit a knot, we can't fix a fucking broken foot out here, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I don't want to haul your scaly ass back to the tavern. Various threats and insults, if that's how you roll. Um, Varys, you... Between everybody, you guys do manage to kind of pull it together. Um, and you do stumble across the hunting trail. Um, it's it's not obvious. Um, it's definitely, for your survival check, Varys, you realize that it's it's kind of a medium flow of traffic, deer, um, various prey animals through here. It's not heavily padded like this is the best hunting trail. Um, and that makes it a little strange, because usually these thickets are a bit more populous. So it's a little worrying for you, at least from what you know. Again, um, kind of relate it back to your your undercity. You know, the more prey moves through something, the more worn it is, and this doesn't look super worn. Okay, so you guys found the trail. Congrats! Um, Yay. Yeah, everybody helps out. Um, so you find it. You guys going to follow it from that point? Yeah, I guess. Do we do we okay. want to go go to the farm first or do the trail Doesn't first? Doesn't this trail lead to the farm? Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't understand that. Sorry. Sure. Um, with the cartographic knowledge from Bia and the perception from Hallis and investigation. Oh no, you had good investigation. You guys um, start trying to figure out where you are in reference to the actual plots themselves. You do realize that you're closer to the um, the second in the three line. <clears throat> you could head north and, and find the most recent one if you would like, um, or you can continue along the trail. Um, it should take about an hour either way to figure out where the trail goes or to head up to the north and figure out um, what happened at the farm. We'll point out newest incident has the freshest evidence. Good point. Mm -hmm. True. I'd approve the party. Yeah, let's let's do newest, and we can work our way back. Okay. Um, so we'll take about another extra hour. Um, you guys have been out and about here for probably about three hours now, so it's getting close to around seven. The sun is starting to set, and it's getting close to twilight. Um, Maybe it's best that we go to the new one and see if we can follow the path forwards to see if we can catch it in the act rather than work our way away from where the next likeliest fire will be. So follow the trail to what could be the next event mm -hmm. instead of going north to find the evidence yeah. of the most recent one. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have a little time to investigate the newest one that happened before we go and try to find the next potential spot. Your guys' call. 
Just because they said they woke up to the fires, which means they would have had to have gone to bed, and it's only seven, so it's a little early. Yeah, we might be able Even to catch it. In the okay, so as you guys head toward the most recent fire uh, location, um, there's a small bridge that crosses over a small creek. Obviously, hand built. It's pretty rickety. Um. Everybody make me perception, please. Okay. Huh, okay. Good, I actually rolled above a 10 this time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a 5 and then a 4. <laughs> I was like, no, stop it. And need one from Varus. Okay. So, Varus, you are super focused on getting to the place. The rest of you realize as you cross the bridge, there's a couple things here that might not want you around on this particular path. Uh, you guys go ahead and roll me initiative. Oh, jeez. Um, everybody roll me initiative. And then, very you're going to miss your first turn. Duly noted. Uh, I forget how I roll initiative again. Normally, select your token and then push it on your sheet. Uh, it's saying you attempt to use roll command looking for the value of selected token, but no tokens are selected. We, we, we need to wait. Your token. I switched you over. I am going to be throwing your tokens down. Un moment. Oh, sorry. The, the GM goofed. I'm huge. I think that's everybody. I'm humongous. Oh. And this is on... Yes, this is on the tokens layer. Okay. How, how are you guys want to structure yourselves? Oh, nice. Coming off this bridge, I'm going to put Varus right here. So he's kind of charging forward. Is that okay? Go ahead. Okay. I think I'm going to be uh, back a ways watching everyone. I'm kind of going to be... Sure no one gets lost. Since I'm a head above him, I'm just going to be like looking over his head and kind of periscoping around. Okay. So, Althrix. Yes. Althrix and Bia, you hear the hiss of a rattlesnake. Snake. But oh, shit. you also hear. Uh, Can we roll insight to try to figure out if that is animal call signs? Oh, no, uh, never mind. You can absolutely, if you would like to. Um, Athalia, you are the one that picks up on the the hum of some sort of a nest of insects nearby. Oh, shoot. And none of the sounds that you all have heard seem <laughs> particularly uh, happy to hear you. Okay. One, two, three, four. Or well, fuck you, nature too. One. Bia, go ahead and roll your initiative. Click a token and then click initiative. Uh, sorry. Sure. It feels good to have all my spells for the first time in like four games. <laughs> nice. nice. Okay. John's character. So, with all of this... Um, I'd love to rename that if I could. So you guys hear the, the hiss of a snake, you hear the clucking of some sort of an animal, and you hear humming of some sort of an insect. Uh, and it is Bia's turn first. I assume the thing I see is the... Do I, do I see anything, or...? Yep. Um, you do see, under these sets of bushes over here, um, you do see kind of a, a coiled snake. You're not sure what kind it is. Um, you hear some sort of a fight going on over here to see a rattlesnake and some sort of fowl um, kind of pecking at each other or hissing back and forth. However, you do not see. You only hear what's going on over here. Over where? Oh, mark it again. Bam. I'm not seeing it. Big old... I don't see it either. Are you drawing on the GM there? That would be it. 
Do do. <laughs> okay, there. Thank you. I do do that all the time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <you are. laughs> did, I, did I switch out? Okay. So what would you okay. like to be doing? So I would like to remind you guys. Um, like I said in chat, um, there's something I want to enforce. Um, I shouldn't say enforce. Something I want to um, to reinstill in you guys is that um, nature checks, things to find information out about your surroundings, um, can lead to easier fights. Um, not necessarily in that you will be doing more damage if you find more information out about them, but you might start finding out the resistances. Maybe there are um, some stats that you can use against them, um, but also anything I come up with environmentally for the map. So don't feel if you're not attacking, you're wasting your turn. Um, it may take a turn to finish up engagements, but those um, it will kind of flesh out the combat a bit more. So with that, Bia, what's your action? Um, what you doing? I think I'm actually just going to run up and stab it. Stab what? Uh, I think I'm going to stab that snake that's closest to me. Okay. Feel free. So you got a nice long polo. I would, Yeah, I'm going to stay back about as far as I can, and then I just kind of want to stab it. Okay. I would like to rage first. <laughs> Okay. Stupid snake! I am. It's a long walk in the woods. I don't know what we're doing, and this is therapeutic after whatever the hell that. You know, ride was. all the things I've learned about being in nature, me, is you do not mess with anything like this. You just keep on walking. We are going against everything I've learned. <laughs> we're. Yeah. Possibly hunting druids. You really want to leave them? You really want to think these things are all natural right now? Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, those druids can influence and talk to animals. So. Okay, um, my scout handbook. Or did not we're just pissing druids. them off, and I'm completely wrong on this theory. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think that's plus two because I'm raging. Okay. Uh, so 23 to hit definitely hits it. Eight piercing damage to it's a snake, it can't have that much hit points. Ten piercing uh, damage, ten piercing damage because I'm raging. Nice, okay. It could have more HP if they're secretly druids. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but then, well, no, they would be then they would turn know, back they to back. the druid, Oops, yeah. So, okay, yeah. so that is BS turn. Um, this little cotton mouth when is wee, going wee, to wee, be all the way home. actually slithering up to Varus. Um, the it is it is better for it to fight something that it doesn't know than the <laughs> current thing that is pecking at it. Wait, what's pecking? Like, oh God, I'm getting away! Oh look, things I can bite. Um. Is thirty, so it's five ten. See, 15, we need to give 20. them an escape route, so they feel less threatened. All right. So, Ooh. does twenty one hit? Yes. Okay, you're going to be taking eight piercing damage, and then I need a Constitution saving throw. Okay. You might be resistant to poison as a drow. I think uh, right. I'm pulling that up. I'm just going to roll it in case. Mm -hmm. It's a nine. I'm pulling up my books right now to see. Because uh, I mm, also know I've got some things from Paladin. That's, uh, that's disease. From Paladin. Yep. Let's look up. It's a drow. Uh, it doesn't look like it. No, no poison resistance. Only dwarves, I guess. Yeah, dw dwarves and Dorgar. That drow might just because they're very spidery related. Um, mm. And since it's twilight, you are not taking a disadvantage to your attacks. Duly noted. Okay. Um, take a further seven poison damage. Oh. Okay. 
How you doing? Oh, Bad. Okay. Now, you can click on your token, uh, click on the red circle, and then just type negative and whatever your damage was. So negative eight and then negative seven, enter, and then it should take it away from your health on the chart. Um, what chart? 28, your normal maximum? Yes. Okay. Sorry, not your chart, the health bar above you. So when you yeah. click on it, click in the red circle, and then you can just type negative Holy 8. Holy crap, Bia, yep, you I, have I 37 that. hit points. Hi. That's insane. <laughs> 31. Oh. I feel so squishy. The, uh, the, the foul-looking thing, um, it looks like a rooster mixed with a peacock with very sharp claws, and it is flying in a ball of feathers at you. A recock, if is, you will. You you may be raging, uh, but it seems also to be raging. <laughs> Just this ball of angry feathers coming at you. Bird rage. My spirit uh, animal? <laughs> does 20 hit you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. It does two piercing damage, and I need a DC, I'm sorry, a constitution saving throw. Oh, are they all poisonous? Dang. Oh, God, it is a cockatrice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. When I first saw it, I was wondering if it was a cockatrice. Shoot. Well, uh, she's not turning to stone. <laughs> That's <Okay>. good. <laughs> yep, so all you take is the two damage. Uh, if you do the same thing as Jean, just click on your token oh. and put negative two in the red circle. Okay, take that and out. And that'll keep your guys' health. Uh, Othrix, your turn. Okay. Um, I am going to cast... Uh, Yeah, I'm gonna cast magic missile. Do do I? I mean, have... It's not quite dark yet. Sorry, bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> cast it into the darkness. <laughs> I cast magic missile into the <laughs> darkness. Uh, do I have to move so I don't hit Bia? Um, they can. Open. Yeah, no, you're fine. Okay, Go around cover. Cool. So I am. Do I'm guessing I recognize what this thing is. Have you made a nature check? Uh, will that be my action? Yes, it will. Dang it. Um, shit, I don't know. I think the, the people that would most easily recognize it are the people that are out in the wilderness more frequently. So okay. most likely uh, Hallis, um, Athalia, um, and uh, we'll say Varys too. Okay. Well, right now it is one of the things threatening my friends. So... Okay, so Othrix, I think he would take two shots at the bird and one at... So, let me do this. Okay. He's going to take two magic missiles at the bird and one at the snake, since I get three of them, if I remember correctly. Okay. Yes, you do. All right. So... You should just be able to click on it in your... Um, yep. On your sheet, and it'll cast it for you. Uh... <laughs> Not if his spells are broken, which they might be. Okay, let me look it up. I can fix them real quick. It's okay. I I think I roll. Okay. Magic, magic mouth, magic missile. Okay. Uh, each dart deals one d four plus one force damage. Okay, so, so just roll three d four. Okay. And then we'll um, add the plus one to it. Well, should I do two d four for the bird and then one d four for the? Uh, no, because it'll list them all in chronological. We'll just go from front to back. And first two are. I'm sorry. Trees. What what They're do I bonus. type in again? I'm sorry. Uh, forward slash r mm -hmm. space three d four. Oops. Okay. Oh, nice. So ten damage to the cockatrice and three damage to the snake. Good hit. Nice. Accidentally deleted one of your first little spells. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It worked now. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, so good successful hits. Thank you. Are you gonna Are you gonna move? Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I am going to shoot. Yeah, I'm going to move. I think just up a little bit so I can get a better view of what is going on. But I'm not okay. Going... Actually, no. Actually, no. Authorus is going to move back. Okay, where is he moving to? Uh, he's going to move kind of closer to the bridge. There we go. Okay. All right. With that, Athalia, what you up to? Um, is this little thing down here the insects? And yes. At the bottom of the map. Yep, that one. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. And then. Are right, you gonna stab me? Yeah, I'm gonna stab it. So what do I do? It's okay, been so a while. Bring up your sheet, and then you should just be able to click on the attack that you want to make. So whichever weapon I want to use. That's correct. Oh yeah, 21 definitely hits. 8 piercing damage. Nice. Alright, so you, uh, how do you kill it? Um, I'm gonna walk up and is it still attached to John's character? Um, it, it kind of bit it and, and retreated, so it's coiled up and was waiting to strike, so. I'm just gonna stab it, like, Right at the back of the head. She okay. Athalia walks up, just very quickly points the rapier directly down to the ground, and with a slice, it stops moving. Yay! <laughs> it did. Uh, now it's time for Cottonmouth number two to move up. Let's see, seventeen hit. Oh, max damages. Who is it hitting? It would be hitting you. I believe so. Okay. Uh, you're taking eight piercing damage. Cool. And make me a constitution saving throw, please. Ooh, 13 points. Damn. Remember, you're taking half damage from the piercing because you're raging. Yes, half damage. So take an extra. So you're only taking four piercing because you're raging. And the poison damage you're taking half of as well, so six. six. So ten damage overall. Well, does that half again because she's raging? Uh, I don't think so. She doesn't. Have, she's not way of the bear. I don't think. Okay. If she was yeah. way of the bear, it would. But otherwise, no. It's just piercing. Well, we can always check. See, making y'all learn characters. Look at that. <laughs> cough, cough. Kafka. Kafka? What's what about what about the uh, metamorphosis? Who's metamorphosizing here? Kafifi. Kafifi. <laughs> <sighs> so I take ten damage overall. Um, yes. Bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Yeah. Slash. Yep. So yeah, you're taking four plus six. So yeah, ten damage overall. Cool. Halas, your turn. Oh, boy. You have an enraged cockatrice. That might be charging at some point, and you have that incessant humming down south still, too. Remember, Bia, you have reach. You don't have to be right next to any creatures. Yep. Wait, is there another monster down here? Can is you it? not see it? No. You down at the very bottom. I, straight I down from me. I don't see anything. I see the I see the bug. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. And then there's a cockatrice over here, too. I don't see oh, that. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah, we can't see Yeah, that I see a broken cockatrice. link under Halas in the turn mm. order. Okay, hold on. Let's do this, then. Copy that other cockatrice. Oh, great, there's two. Yay. Ta-da. Okay. <laughs> I still don't see this anymore. Yeah, it's still don't see Okay, there it is. There we go. Oh, shoot. And this one was acting on with the cockatrice. 
No, he's acting with the swarm. Yeah, the three as well. Bug Mayor had the same initiative. Okay. I still can't see it. Right here? I can see it. Oh, I'm... Hold on, let me refresh my roll 20, because it is uh, not updating. Unfortunate. There we go. Now I can see it. Well, if there's another cockatrice, I'm going to go attack that other cockatrice. I am going to pull out my rapier. Now I'm going to try to pierce this little guy. Hopefully. Okay, yeah, definitely hits. So seven piercing damage. I'm going to try to, like, take my shield and just, like, bash downward at it and see if I can knock it to the ground. That's my shove action. Oh, yeah. So it is, you said, down and prone, right, I believe? Yeah. With yeah, the shield bash? Yeah, it prone. Okay, <laughs> we shall give it a... Oh, what was the prone? I forget. Uh, there's icons for this bullcrap. Yeah, there's like a dude bent over. There we go. Yep. There you go. Yeah! Yeah! Um, yeah, boy! Alright, so that's Halas' turn. Uh, the insect buzzing starts getting deeper um, as you realize that it is in fact coming. And it's going after you. So. Bring it, b -b -b boy. Okay, not with a crit, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Owie. Uh, yeah, so. God. Yep. Oh, jeez. So, there you go. <laughs> so 23 damage. They are not happy with you, and they have gotten all in the leather armor. They're up in your helmet, and they are just stinging viciously. Um, it is it is not a fun place to be right now. Uh, yeah, and that took me from 31 to 8. Yeah. Ooh. Oof. Well, now you have the cockatrice hitting you too. 19 to hit. What is this 2d4? Why are they rolling 4d4? Um. That is language. a good. That's what it is. Good question, actually. Like, wait, it says they do roll 2d4. <laughs> They're rolling fours. But yes, that cockatrice is going to hit me as well. Oh, 2d4 piercing damage of this if the swarm has half of its hit points or fewer. Ah. Okay. So it hits three piercing damage. Um, and then make a DC 11 constitution throw, please. Ugh. Just made it. Okay, so take your three and move yeah. quickly on. Yeah, so apparently uh, it... Luck is not on your particular side today. Be no, all. Really not. <laughs> is it possible for me to take my pike, spear the snake, and fling it onto the bird? <laughs> um, you're not necessarily going to do any damage, but you could cause them to fight each other. That's the goal. <laughs> okay. Go for it. Roll me a... Um, just roll me a regular attack action then with your spear. Oh, this is not not fun. Where is Achilles? Will this work better? Lonesome West stuff is. Twenty-one to hit, definitely hits. Um well, you can either do the damage and spear it to the ground, 
and kill it, or you can toss it on the cockatrice. <laughs> oh god, the bees! I no! toss it on the cockatrice in hopes that they fight. <laughs> okay, so you will throw it onto them. Um, I will do five damage on it as they start tussling. It's very successful. You basically just scoop the hook directly underneath it, kind of flick it off to the right, and the first thing it does is reach out and just sucker punch that that cockatrice in the throat. Yeah. So it's uh, it's doing a little bit of damage. With that, sure. are they? Do you think that are they busy with each other? I assume now. Oh yeah, yeah. You you will be able to disengage from that fight. Can I run away, or will sure. this turn while I take a? attack of opportunity. Nope, you you get a free disengage because they're now fighting each other. Cool. I'll rule. So, go ahead and move. You can run all the way away. <laughs> okay. Um, Varys, you just got a nasty bite on your leg. Oh, that's gonna suck. But it's your turn. Eh, I don't want to move up and deal with the swarm, but I'm going to move up and deal with the swarm. Okay. Yeah, deal with the swarm. It takes does a lot of damage. Yep. Yeah, I'm just going for the smite. Straight up smite. All right. Let's do this. Rolling the... Actually, I'm going to roll the hit first, because making smite work in this is weird. That's a no. Oh, yep. That definitely does not hit. Uh, shit, I forgot to spend inspiration, but doesn't matter. I will allow it this time. Just okay, make I'm sure just... you declare it beforehand. Yep, I'm going to roll it again. I'm just not going to bother with giving myself advantage, because it'd be fine. the second roll. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Very much hits nine piercing damage, and then you add dice on top of it, if I'm correct. Yes, is this smite. Okay. Another oh, 15 geez. radiant. All right, well, the 15 goes through without complaint. Um, the piercing, however, uh, gets... Uh, you, so, <laughs> describe to me how you're trying to get these these wasps off of Varus, or off of Alice. I've got poison pumping in my leg. Everyone's being smart, just... Okay, let's... Can I recreate that trick from last time? Rage. A little bit of, all right, yeah, there it is. Most call and just walk up and I've never swung a sword, rung, never swung a sword through a swarm before. But here goes nothing and just yaka. <laughs> so as you as you kind of swat the rapier down, um, you you tap Varus's shoulder and there's an. Ex you mean Hallis? Hallis, I'm sorry. You you hit Hallis's shoulder as as a way to you know start trying to stir them up and get them out of his of his um, jacket. And as you do, there's a small puff of blue energy that just forces the swarm apart. And there's just a shit ton of dead wasps that rain down. Be careful. It I doesn't seem to hurt Hallis. Hmm. So with that, this cockatrice is going to start fighting the uh, cottonmouth. You, you hear hissing and snarling and, and snapping and all kinds of shit. Um, but ultimately, the other snake, uh, the cockatrice looks back to, to have the dead snake out of its beak as it crunches it in half Let them and, and looks back at you guys. Uh, Authrix, your turn. Uh, shoot. Uh, okay, right now... Right now, I'm more concerned about those bugs harrying my friends, so I am going to use Witch Bolt on them and fry some bugs. Okay. So, bring that up. Yes. <laughs> okay, Witch Bolt. I'm making a note for later to come in here and fix all your spells. Yeah, and uh, I'm right. missing the comprehend language. It is yeah, make a ranged spell, spell attack mm -hmm. against your creature. Um, on the hit, target takes 1d12 lightning damage. Cool. Uh, so whatever you're casting, um, 
thing is make a uh, a, a roll with that. Yeah, uh, casting is I think it's wisdom. No, it's not not wisdom. It can't be wisdom. No, it's not wisdom for you. Uh, it is <laughs> established that one. Yeah, uh, it is charisma. charisma. There we go. Yep. So just roll charisma. Are you targeting the wasps or are you targeting the cockatrice? Oh, uh, the wasps. Okay. Fifteen is a proficiency. Okay. Oh yeah, proficiency bonus plus two, so fifteen. Okay. Yep, you definitely hit it. One D twelve. Cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, sir. Oh, jeez. Nice. Yeah. Power, unlimited power. I don't. So know describe why. how you finish off the swarm. Oh, nice. So. I just send, as kind of a little artistic thing, I just, almost like I'm, I'm conducting, I just have single arcs come out from my hands and just go from bug to bug to bug to bug to bug to bug to bug. <laughs> Think of like fat, like fast acting uh, demo charges. You just see like the flashes move along the line. Okay, so the lightning strikes between it and then all of a sudden wasps start blowing up along that lightning. Yes. <laughs> Now, okay. as long as I maintain concentration, I can move that to another creature next round, correct? Yes, you can. As far as I know, yes, yeah. you can. I don't know if you can move it, but you definitely could have kept doing damage with it. Um, on sure. each of your turns for the duration, you can use your action to deal 1d12 to the target automatically. Um, oh, spell the ends target. if the target... Yeah, it's single uh, target. Okay, that's fine. Never mind, then. Okay. Cool. I'm happy. Uh, that will be a fall, yeah. Hex yes. Mark, do that. What you doing? Oh, that's right. That's right. Are both birds still alive then? Yes. There's one below Bia, and there's one up to the north here who just got done eating a snake. One to the bottom is prone. Oh, it's like the Mexican flag, except with the cockatrice. Mm. How far can I move again? 30 feet? Yep. I'll move there. I lied here and wait for it to come to me well you should have a, a short bow or spells um, oh no hang on I have a dagger yeah <laughs> that's not gonna do it nope <laughs> so you uh as, as you're running over the path you kind of hit a stone for a moment because you're, you're focusing on trying to, to hone in the dagger and as you hit the stone with your foot you trip just enough to throw the dagger off and it kind of lands at the, the cockatrice's feet looks down in that very bird like way and then looks up at you it's like and there's just hate in its eyes think of the you know that it's <laughs> think of the chicken think from of Moana. a chicken yeah but with <laughs> think of a chicken yeah. but a very angry chicken <laughs> okay that can turn you to stone you also have acid splash which is a cantrip that you can just cast infinitely mm -hmm. wait can Instead. I do that too no, but you could have done that instead of throwing a dagger. Okay, I'll Probably do that have done more time. damage. Hellas! Alright, I'm gonna stab this fucking chicken. Go for it. I think you get advantage because it's prone? Yes. Oh, oh nice. Yeast. That certainly hits, and it hits for ten. Nice. It's like a truck. Uh, it's kind of flopping around on the ground. <laughs> Stab it right through the breast. It's not dead yet, but you've definitely like you've you cut off a good portion of its wing. We're eating well tonight. I'm gonna use my uh, second wind and regain. Uh, oh, nice! Eight, eight hit, points. hit points. Convenient. Good man. And I'm gonna action oh. surge and kill this stupid piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I want it dead. God, fighters are awesome. Yes, oh, nice. that very much kills it. Okay. All right, how do you kill it? Little head off, my rapier. Okay. Like a little like pop, and its head just flies through the air. Uh, have you ever heard the the phrase "chicken with its head cut off"? Yes. Yeah, that's kind of what happens for a moment. Is it flails and blood spurting everywhere and tossing and turning. Yeah, but eventually settles down and it's very much dead. Uh, back to Bia. <sighs> Maddie. That one last uh, 
cockatrice alive? Yep, it's all the way up here, and it's looking at Athalia very angrily. For having dared uh, get a throwing weapon close to it. Cockatrices are very angry animals. I'm going to stab it with my pike just to make it even more pissed off. Go for it. Do, 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 do. This is, I think it's appropriate wildlife fighting music here. I understand the Legend of Zelda. <laughs> uh, five. Mean? It does hit. It does five uh, that's plus two because I'm raging still. All right. Where do you hit it? How do you hit it? I'm going to hit it at its little face. <laughs> okay. You do section off a good portion of its beak and cheek. Um, it is still very upset with you, but it is it is hurting. It's very much on its last legs, almost in a literal standpoint. And then we go to Varus. Uh, can I get to... I can get to the cockatrice. You know it. I'm high on godly energy. <laughs> and that is why Bear should not be left in charge of things. Oh, man. Yep. Unfortunately, that does not quite hit. Um, trying to squeeze between the two ladies doesn't leave you with a lot of leverage, and it just kind of skirts off the ground next to him. That will... <laughs> that will leave the cockatrice. Who's again very offended at you that you decided to uh, go after it? So, what is your AC? It is going to be a seventeen. Well, lucky for you, your rapier is in the way, <laughs> and all you see is this little gummy like because its beak's torn off. It's trying to gum your rapier as it's trying to get at you and scratch you with its feet. And you're just managing to keep it at bay far enough that it can't touch you with those stone claws. Othrix. Oh, it's my turn again. Uh, I'm going to spend sorcerer points, which I think I need to spend two to get a first level spell back. So I'm going to spend two of my sorcerer points to get back Witch Bolt. And I'm going to... I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to fry that bird. All right. We're going to deep fat right, fry from that the bird. Out. Mm, going to be delicious. Okay. Won't be, won't be Kentucky Fried. Okay, so do the same thing as I did oh last my time. God. That's correct. Okay, so the was uh, charisma and plus two, so that's twenty. There we go. Cool. All right. So you got twenty. Yep. And it is. I believe it's one d twelve. Yep. Yeah. It's um. You cauterized the wounds. Essentially, you see it kind of jitter and shake, um, and it, it is barely—it is still trying to attack. I will uh, have Maris. you for dinner. <laughs> That's what it's saying to him. If you could understand, uh, cockatrice, Athalia. Yes. You want to finish it off? No. <laughs> I mean, you can always acid splash it and get rid of its feathers so you guys can eat it later. I know how to pluck I'm a chicken. I'm not going to eat the damn thing. I am. <laughs> That's a good chicken. There's more than one way to skin a dragon. Hey. <laughs> okay, so it has to make a dexterity saving throw, huh? I guess. And it fails terribly. Splat. Splat. So, <laughs> two acid damage is just enough oh the thing finally being a terror on the world itself finally dies Athalia how would you like to kill it throw acid at it oh, I mean do you, want, <laughs> do you want to describe how it dies or do you want me to take not, care of it not particularly I just horrible agony it, no I assume that it dies in like a little like its feathers go up in a puff of smoke and it just kind of keels over and it's dead. <laughs> it's Smoking. <okay. laughs> 
Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the, the last call. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. You uh, you survived the encounter. Uh, Arthrix immediately. That was a lot. Arthrix immediately collects the bodies. The, the okay. two cockatrices. Yep. So Yep, the two cockatrice, and you have um, technically two snakes, but it's more like a snake and two halves of a snake. Because the cockatrice ate the other half. Uh, I'll grab the whole snake. I'll, I'll leave the other one alone. Okay. You only right. need the head for the poison. Well, I, I, I don't need the poison. I just need the meat. All right. So, with all of that, ladies and gentlemen... Um, I'm actually going to say it's to go on from here. Uh, it's going to get a lot more involved. Um, I don't know if we're going to have time to finish out the rest of the session. So I will leave it with you guys. If you would like to continue the session, we can. If not, um, we can call it here and, and prepare for next week or two weeks from now. Uh, I'm good for stopping here. Uh, so am I. Yeah, I'm not picky. Good. Okay. All right. So we'll call it at that. Um, you guys have not leveled up on this one. Um, however, we will do our normal um, good thing, bad thing, and the awarding of inspiration. So start from the top. Joshua, good thing, bad thing. Uh, <coughs> bad thing was. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bad thing. Yeah, that was a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> no, it would have been far worse, honestly, uh, if I hadn't gotten a little bit better. I would have been hacking up along. Um, good thing. I actually felt useful in a battle this time. <laughs> because the last battle, I didn't land a single hit on that necromantic monster. But damn it if those cockatrices didn't feel it. They felt the wrath of a dragonborn. <laughs> and they felt fear before they died. Along with those wasps, but mostly the cockatrices. Mm -hmm. Okay, bad thing. Oh, for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, Obsession, oh. anything in general? I am very poor. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go. Yes. I wanted to go to fax shops. machines. Yeah, twenty gold. My fax God. machines without uh, fax machines without actual technology are very expensive. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm looting gonna a it. lot like of it. bodies if we come across them. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All right, Maddie. Good thing, bad thing. Uh, good thing I got to fling a snake at a chicken and recreate the Mexican flag. Yay. <laughs> Feeling patriotic. Bad thing, I totally forgot about my Storm Herald feature and realized it right as we were finishing up combat that I could have done that at any point. Oh, that's, that's unfortunate. That's bad on my part, though. Lexi, good thing, bad thing? Um... I really liked, um, what's his name? Vexation? The... Yep, the tiefling the vexation. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked him. He was a good part of this. Uh, bad thing, I only got one hit in on the stupid little chicken. <laughs> That's okay. Stabbed a snake. At, at least he decided not to wield the knife in his beak and come back after you. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, I think there's a, a gif of that somewhere. I'll look that up in a sec. It but... would have been a real Mexican <laughs> cockfight then. Yeah, at that point. Okay, uh, John? Uh, good thing. I'm torn between actually feeling useful at legwork and what happened in the carriage ride, because that was great. Yeah, <laughs> That was an amazing piece of... Uh... <laughs> actually, for that, I... did you do you have inspiration right now? I spent it. He spent it. Go ahead and take another one for that. That was that was well done. Bia, take one too, because that that in and of itself was a fun little Sweet. little back and forth. Um, and bad, bad thing. Bad thing. Um, I'm torn between uh, that. Other than the Shadal connection, I feel like I'm not very useful a lot outside of combat, and apparently tracking through terrain I've never been in in my life. Um, and uh, the fact that apparently unless I'm going to smite something, I can't hit anything. <laughs> or that I am a lot squishier than I think I am. Yep, that's that's the downside of leather armor, unfortunately. I can't... I, I've never played a 3-5 Paladin, but I'm used to 3-5 Paladins. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, they that is unfortunately the downside of of five E is everybody's a lot squishier. Um, it's it's hard to to tank unless you have a good build for it. Yeah, but I'm I'm having a blast. I'd say it really does come down to unless I'm going to smite something, I don't hit anything. It's it's unfortunate because I know it's just rolling too. It's not even it, it, anything against you. <laughs> makes for, makes for like a great thought of like I can't hit anything unless Shadal's helping me. This is fantastic. That is a good twist on it though. I'm not a fighter. I'm not much of anything. Uh, for me, um, I definitely had a good. The good for me was the um, the interactions you guys had in the very beginning. Um, describing your situation, describing your interests, describing what you were going after. It created, I don't want to say party tension, because it definitely wasn't a um, like an argument or anything, but the, the fact that you guys had to negotiate amongst yourselves to decide where to go, I thought that was an interesting oh, turn. Sure. It seemed like everybody got involved in that. Downside, um, the critical... <laughs> Oh, Holy oh shit! My god. That, was scary. <laughs> that was even I went. Oh my god! <laughs> I did not expect that in the slightest. I'm pretty sure you guys have healing potions, right, left over from the last encounter. I used I mine. So. I I think on the very okay. first encounter. Okay, I know I gave you guys two more. Oh, you did at some point. Yeah, off of the um, uh, off the crate. Or the uh, the wagon in Ged Cal, and I think you still have them. I don't think anybody's had to use them. I'm not sure who um, has them. Oh, we'll go back over that. My actual bad is that it seemed like there were a couple goofs with the program, so I'll have to go back through with Garrett or go through by myself and see if everybody's stuff works like he's doing now. Oh, thank you. Um, the other part of it is is that every everybody should go back through their character sheet. And review what you have and what you don't have. Yep. Um, it seems like a lot. Most everybody didn't have a good sense of what their character either could or couldn't do, or your abilities. So, again, back to the the player contract. Just just have an idea. Um, you guys can do a lot more than just stab things, uh, and I kind of want to see more of that start coming out as we play. Garrett, good thing, bad thing. Uh, I'm glad to see that. Uh... I like that the the role play didn't suffer for us being on hiatus for the last uh, whatever how many weeks it's been. Yeah, a <laughs> I like month, that that month and that, a half. That still seemed to go pretty well. Uh, mm-hmm. I have to agree with you on uh, people knowing what their characters can do in combat could use a little tightening up. That's okay, and that's something that we can review later. Um, if anybody does need help with that, like just going back over your character sheet or going through the book. Um, I, I'm glad to help John Lex, you know, I live right next to you, so I can always pop over. Um, if Josh, Maddie or Garrett need any help, feel free to contact me on here. I'm at least for the next week, I'll be here, um, until I start doing my job, then it'll be at night. But overall, I think it was, I thought it was a really fun session, especially with the introduction of vexation. Um, yes. I had him on the back of my mind for a while. Uh, I'm, Although I must admit, I didn't have a good picture for him until I just looked it up when he said, uh, when Garrett messaged me, he's a tiefling, right? I'm like, oh God, that's amazing. Let's look that up real quick. Tiefling and top hat. And boom, picture. So I'm glad you guys like him. He is going to be sticking around. um, And he will probably be one of your consistent NPCs. Oh, thank God. So make sure to take care of him. (laughs) I only said that because... uh... Because tieflings are in, tieflings like, in, the, in the book. Yeah, they're named after concepts or mm-hmm. ideas. Yeah, I was initially going to have him more of like a um, like an undertaker feel, like a human. And then you said that. I'm like, that fits so much better. I'm going to do that instead. So I'm glad you guys like him. It'll solve a lot of your point-to-point transportation issues, but it might also raise a lot more questions. So, again, exactly what this party needs is more wrenches. There you go. Which both now works. <laughs> oh, thank God. Um, amongst you guys, uh, we'll hand out an inspiration real quick. Uh, who do you guys think did the best or the best role playing, like collectively? Who should we give inspiration and why? Well, Bia and I already got some, so that's all taken care of. Um, I'd say Josh. 
Yeah, I was going to say Josh as well. Yeah, yeah. Josh. Oh, For what reason? Uh, all he, role play. Yeah, he stuck to the Othrix personality, and it was fun. It was fun interacting with it. There we go. Josh, taking inspiration. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right, guys. Any comments, questions, concerns? Anything about the anything once said before the stream ends? Um, I can't think of anything. Your spite works, it by the way. Sat- is it Saturday yet? Two Saturdays from now? <laughs> <laughs> I will warn you guys, considering how this, this went, I'm not editing the other encounter I had planned. I do have two potions. So bring your A game, because this next one's going to be difficult. Will do. All right. I mean, I, at least I have this to look forward to after Ohio Con. <laughs> That's very true. He has something to recoup. <laughs> Yep. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and sign off the stream, Joshua. All right. Once again, thank you for streaming it for us. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody who showed up. Uh, appreciate it, especially Wolf Knight. I, I'm really happy to see you back after a couple months. So uh, hope to see you again. Night, everybody.